Hi everyone, this is a beginner's guide to the Metroid Dread Any% Percent No Major Glitches speedrun. Uh, there's been a lot of changes and new discoveries since my last guide, so I figured it was time for an update. Um, I will show you the game version that we're on here real quick. We are on 2.1.0, uh, which is the latest version as of this guide. Um, and I guess we'll just go ahead and get started. So one of the biggest changes that's happened recently is the addition of Rookie Mode. Uh, this makes two important things for speedruns. Uh, one, which is slightly less important, but does still have a factor, is that health pickups give you more health. But more importantly, you start with 30 missiles. You can see even from this uh, save screen right now, my rookie mode save has 30 missiles at the start. Um, now, you'll also notice that I'm starting from a file that already has 3 minutes and 44 seconds on the timer. That is where we start the Metroid Dread speedrun. Basically, in order to get this file, you just you start a new file, you play through all the opening cinematics, uh, and then you quit out and you will have this file just sitting here. Um, this way you can see it basically just saves a bunch of time off the start. There's no like real interaction or anything when you're going through the intro sequence. So this just saves us that, well, about three minutes and 44 seconds. Um, and then the time would start upon pressing continue on this screen. I'm not going to run a timer for this, but we'll go ahead and get started in three, two, one, go. So, like I said, this is a beginner's guide to the No Major Glitches speed route, or NMG. It's also called Restricted sometimes. Um, and what that means is that there's a few glitches that are allowed, uh, which I'll show you as we get to them. Uh, and there are a few glitches that are not allowed. Generally speaking, and this is something that there's still an ongoing discussion in the Metroid uh, Dread community as I'm uh, recording this video right now. But generally speaking, glitches that aren't allowed are ones that allow Samus herself to pass directly through terrain or cause her to spin herself in a way that doesn't make sense. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that because it's not really relevant for the part of uh, the point of this video. But um, if you're familiar with glitches like camera lock or shine slink, you're not uh, shine sync, excuse me, you're not going to see those in this run. Uh, I'll also note that there is a brand new trick that was just discovered a couple of weeks ago called short boost that will probably end up being part of the NMG route, uh, but it's very, very difficult to pull off and it completely changes the route. Uh, so if you can't do it or can do it, uh, the route is entirely different. Uh, and because this is a beginner's guide and it's meant to at least show you the, the easiest way to get into it, uh, we're not going to bother with it here. Uh, so a couple things before I get started that are important to note about uh, Metroid Dread. One is that Samus will fire as fast as you push the button. So here's me pushing the button just casually with my, with my thumb. If I try and mash really fast with one finger, this is about as fast as my one button mash goes. Uh, and then there's a technique you can do. I'll try to uh, include a link uh, to a video in the description where you rock your uh, controller back and forth in your hand. It's called double mashing. And you can get some really, really high speeds of mashing in that. There's only a couple places where that will matter. I'll mention it again once we get close to it. Um, but that's an important thing to note about this route. Uh, I will also mention that uh, as of fairly recently, uh, turbo controllers are allowed on the Metroid Dread leaderboards. So if you don't want to have to like mash like crazy on your own, uh, you can use a turbo controller. Uh, I have uh, I have one that I've done some experimenting with. Um, I don't use it because I, I don't like the, um, the the way that the sticks move and the, they tend to get stuck at right angles in weird ways that kind of bothers me. Um, and I don't have too much trouble with the mashing myself, but it is an option for you if you don't want to deal with the mashing. Uh, and on that, I guess we'll just go ahead and get started. So uh, one of the first things I'll note right here, as you come to these ledges, uh, if you slide off of ledge, you'll see me do this a lot through the run. If you slide off of a ledge, Samus gets down a little bit faster. You can kind of see the difference there. There she kind of slowly falls and lands in the middle of it. But if you slide off the edge, she kind of keeps her momentum a little bit. So as we come through here, we're going to use missiles to kill these guys. If you are fast enough at shooting your missiles, you can kill them before you run into them. Um, and then ideally here, so there's a blob up there that we need to be able to kill to move on because uh, this is a charge beam door. We can't get through that. Um, and what you can do is as you slide through there. Wow, I missed entirely. As you slide through there, you can hit that with some blobs. It's not like mandatory or required, but you'll see a lot of runs that they're like coming through here, they shot their missiles, and then they're like, do like that. If you end up up here and have to shoot it, that's fine. Don't worry about it. You're, you're losing at most like a second or two. Um, we come through here. Uh, normally the game wants you to like shoot these blocks and 
grab off ledges, but we can just wall jump and get up. Shoot a rocket to break that first block. You want to shoot that rocket before you uh, before you actually get up on this step. So you're going to come up here, shoot the rocket, slide through. You're going to slide through again there, but that's just a regular shot. And then this one here, you can shoot a rocket to break that block. So let me let me show you what that looks like at speed. Wait for this to respawn. Fall down here completely on accident, but it's fine. We had to wait anyway. Get that guy out of the way. OK, so this is what that looks like at speed. And then you come in here. Now, these uh, cinematics, this is one that can be skipped before it even starts. Um, there's a few of those like that throughout the run. Well done, Samus. Um, in fact, actually, I'm not going to be able to go back. I'll show you another one of those later. Uh, so when you're getting into these atom rooms, uh, this is just mashing as fast as you can. I'm just like mashing the A button as quickly as possible. And then make sure that you don't save uh, because saving slows you down. Uh, but yeah, so I guess to show you kind of what I mean, it's possible to enter that room and then immediately press plus minus on your uh, controller and then you don't see that cinematic at all. Uh, so we move along through here. Uh, you'll notice I did like a slide there, but then like kind of hooked back to the left. That's because if you do a slide off that ledge, you'll grab that ledge and that slows you down a little bit. Um, so you can either just choose not to slide there at all and just walk off the ledge and fall straight down, or you can uh, uh, do the slide and then hook back to the left like I did. You don't need to kill that guy. You don't really need to kill this guy either, but uh, just kind of as you can go. Uh, and then we have this cinematic, which cannot be skipped. Uh, you have to do this one. It's the little tutorial thing. Just do that real quick. Uh, and then this climb, we're going to use missiles to shoot things on the way up here. And you kind of want to move relatively quickly. And there, I actually missed a missile against that guy. But you want to move relatively quickly through that climb because that way the enemies are all in predictable locations as you get to them. Um, it's something that you like as you take some practice, you'll get used to it. You can also, um, I know some people will go up. Um, this side over here so rather than coming up here shoot a guy and then here there was a spot where I grabbed this ledge and I shot a missile so that I could hit an enemy that was flying around right here you can also go up this way if you want um, I I don't I don't I don't think it's actually any faster to go that way but if you're more comfortable with it you can and now we reach the first uh, glitch of the run so there's a blob over there on the other side that we want to be able to hit um, if we normally, like if we play the game normally and we slide through there, then we have to kill that blob from the other side. Then we have to go all the way up around. There's like a little intro Emmy fight that you have to do. It takes like four minutes. Um, that's a big waste of time. We're speedrunners. We don't like wasting time. So instead, what we're going to do is a little glitch. Uh, I'll do the motions down here so that I don't, okay, I can take it a little bit more slowly. So it's going to be a slide followed by a jump, followed by a shot as you hit the, as you hit your head on the ceiling. Kind of like that. Um, but you have to be careful not to slide into the opening. So slide, jump, shot. And you see you kind of land yourself right in this corner. And the shot will go through the wall and hit the blob. If I do it right. There we go. <laughs> there. So now I've done that twice. Uh, or sorry, three times. You see it's big, glowing, and red. Uh, if I do it a fourth time... Uh, then all of this will fall down on my head and crash and I will die. So I don't want that to happen. So the fourth shot has to come from this spot instead, which is a little bit trickier because you need to be at a slight downward angle when you do the shot, but it's otherwise the same motions. Slide jump shot as you hit the, as you hit the roof. There we are. So that trick will take some getting used to, but um, there's a lot of pseudo waves that you're going to want to do throughout the run. I highly recommend taking the time to learn this one because it is a relatively easy one to learn on and uh, it saves you so much time, like seriously, like four minutes. So now we come to the left here and this is another spot with another pseudo wave. I'm going to kill this guy. Normally you don't need to kill that guy, but I'm just going to kill him to get him out of the way. Um, so this is another pseudo wave. This one is a lot more difficult. We need to hit that blob up there. Um, there is a, like, you don't necessarily have to do this one. You could just come down here and do this whole thing instead. 
kill that blob, move around, uh, and play the game as normally. That's a completely different route, though. Um, that's not the one that I'm going to show in this in this run. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to kill that blob from this side. Uh, there's two ways to go about this, um, and I recommend... I'll show you both of them. I recommend picking whichever one feels the most natural to you. So one is you do the same sort of motion where you do slide jump. They're, they're both going to be slide jump and then shoot when you hit the ceiling. So you can do like a slide jump, hit the ceiling, and just shoot back and do like this. And I haven't done it this way in a while, so that's why I'm not landing the hits. Oh, there, I managed to get one hit. Um, the idea then is you slide and you're jumping and you're trying to get your shot right as you bonk your head on like this part right here. And you're trying to shoot at about that angle so that that way it passes through the collision and hits the, uh, it passes out of bounds. Essentially what's happening as we're doing this trick is we're getting the tip of Samus's arm cannon just out of bounds so that when she shoots, uh, the shot is passing through the out of bounds area. So then it comes in bounds right at the point where it hits the block. Now, the other way that you can do this trick uh, is by doing some fancy setup with your controller. So I'll show you how I have this set up. Um, ba -ba -bum. Oh, it's not in there, actually. It's in system settings. You come down here to controllers, uh, change button mapping. And you can see that I have a couple of things changed on mine. Um, I have the Y button for left and right. I don't actually end up using that, but that is an option that you can do if you want to uh, mash faster in that direction. But more importantly, um, I have the left stick uh, changed to be, if I go into control stick settings, right stick I have changed to left stick. Um, and that means that my left stick now, if I get back to the game, my, this is me using my, my right stick. And this is me using my left stick. This is me using my right stick. I've changed the, cause the right stick, clicking it in is something that you use as part of this run, but you don't use the actual aiming of the right stick at all ever. Um, so by changing the right stick to be the same as the left stick, the important thing to understand about that, and this is allowed by the way, because this is considered a basic system feature. Um, so this is allowed on speed runs uh, and on the leaderboards. Uh, the right stick, the, the left stick will always override the right stick, but the right stick will, uh, as soon as you let off of the left stick. So if I hold right on the right stick, right? I'm holding right on the right stick right now. Then I hold left, then I've let off of the left stick. Hold left on the left stick, let off on the left stick. Hold left on the left stick, drop the left stick, essentially. Um, so what that means, the reason I go through all that explanation is that you can come down here and just do a little vault. This is just getting yourself in a position for a setup. Do a little vault, aim, and point right at this like spot on the wall where it kind of sticks out a little bit right at the end. Uh, and then from that, so I'm holding the right stick with my thumb right now, and I'm gonna use my, my fingers to do B and Y. And that allows me to hold the angle so that I can get the angle a little bit more efficiently. Um, I recommend messing around with that quite a bit. I'll actually, um, we'll, we'll actually go ahead and load last checkpoint so I can go through all that again and show you guys. Um, I recommend messing around with a bunch and getting to the point where one or the other feels more natural to you. Uh, for me, I found myself to able to be a little bit more uh, consistent with the rebinding the right stick method. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, if you'd rather just uh, get used to shooting it, that is also completely fine. So we'll do this climb again. We're shooting things with missiles. There's a little bit of back and forth on the stick that I'm doing in there too. Miss that jump, that's unfortunate. And then here again, we have the slide jump, slide jump, slide jump, and then do it up here. This fourth shot is always a little bit trickier than the others. And then here, I'm just gonna do this. And so you can see how, for me, that's way more consistent than just doing the other one. Um, and now, okay, something I'm going to point out here. Uh, if you want, you can go left here and do the charge beam first route. Um, if you want to see that route, I recommend watching my previous video, uh, my previous uh, beginner's guide to the any percent route video, because that's the route that I use in there. But what we're going to do here instead is we're going to use uh, what's called the cloak first route. And this is why rookie mode is important. Basically, um, let's stay away from that guy for a second. Basically, we're going to go over here and we're going to fight Corpius and we're going to get Phantom Cloak as our first upgrade. 
Uh, and so normally, and like in the basic game, when you're fighting Corpius, it expects you to have charge beam and spider magnet. Uh, and you're fighting him like as you're leaving the leaving Artaria. Um, that's not what we're doing. We're coming to him first. So we don't have charge beam. Uh, all we have are our basic shot and we have our missiles. You can do this in the other difficulties. Uh, it's just very, very difficult because you need to land 14 out of 15 of your missiles, I believe. Maybe it's 13 out of 15 of your missiles in each like phase to be able to kill him. Uh, otherwise, you're left just standing there hoping that he lobs something at you so that you can get some missiles back. Uh, on rookie mode, we have 30 missiles. So that makes this significantly easier and makes going cloak first way easier. So we come over here, whack this guy, come on through here. We will skip this cutscene as soon as it starts playing, and we will try to fight Corpius. Now, as I'm doing this here, a lot of the Corpius fight is just getting used to watching his patterns. When he does that, like, stompy move like that, you want to step forward just a little bit. Here, I'll show you. Step forward just a little bit right as he's about to hit. Um, you're also going to need to, once he's in this phase, really pay attention to where his head is as you're hitting him because he's much, much harder to land your shots in this phase if you don't know where his head is. And there I messed up. I was I got myself a little bit too close to him. Uh, normally, I would not have been fighting him for this long, so that's kind of why that's happening. Um, at some point, you will need to break this uh, block. Ideally, you want to aim for having dumped all your missiles into his face before you do that. Um, but there we go. Um, I'm actually going to load from checkpoint from this one. Oh, hold on. Let me show you this. So at this point, you slide through here and you can let him hit you and then just unload missiles into him from there. Um, but I'm going to load from checkpoint so that I can show you guys this fight at speed um, so that I'm not trying to talk through it as much as I'm going through it. Skip the cutscene. Shoot rockets at his face. If he does that barf thing, just shoot up like that. Skip that. Ooh, that was a bit rough. So sometimes he'll do this where he just keeps his head at the bottom constantly. There we go. Break that. We slide through here. You can actually fire a couple of missiles as you slide through that also. And there we are. So now we have Phantom Cloak. And Phantom Cloak is important for a few reasons. Uh, one, there's a couple of spots throughout the run where we literally need to use it to progress. Um, but also, there are... There's a couple of tricks you can do to kind of sneak past enemies slightly faster by cloaking so that you don't they don't see you and they don't move or start up attacks. Um, and also there's a trick that I will show you coming up in a minute uh, that is a slightly more advanced trick, uh, but um, it lets you save a little bit of time if you manage to pull it off. I'll talk more about it once we get to it. But for here, let's talk. About, I want to mention this routing real quick. So you're going to jump off this wall and actually grab and grab up there. Uh, you don't you, you can, but it's harder if you do the jump off the ledge thing, uh, because what we want to do here in order to get through this. So normally in the normal game, you like activate Phantom Cloak and you just walk through here. Um, but that's slow. Walking is slow. So what we're going to do instead, here, I'll show you down here. We're going to start a slide, and then as soon as we start sliding, we activate Phantom Cloak. And the slide will continue, so that way we're able to get through that. And then as soon as you get to the other side, or close to the other side, um, you can uh, you can uncloak. Jump up here, and we're going to go to the left. Here's another Atom Room. So we just mash like crazy in here again. Uploading data. Basically, the faster you press A, the faster you get through this room. And do not save. The game like saves for you constantly anyway, so we don't really need to worry about saving in this speed run. Um, these couple of blobs here. Oops. We kill these. Uh, I tend to 
uh, because like if you run up here and like just put your face straight into it, it can be a little bit difficult. So I tend to jump up there and then aim. Um, so that I can just shoot like that and then I'll slide through. Also important thing to note here, uh, as you slide off this ledge or even just walk off this ledge, uh, don't hold left. If you hold left, you'll grab this ledge, but the, like, there's literally nothing you can do with that. Um, so if you just don't, you let off of the left stick entirely, then you'll drop right down. So now we're in the first Emmy area. However, uh, it's worth noting that we have not activated the Emmy at all yet. So this Emmy doesn't exist, even though we're getting the like the little uh, what do you, whatever you call it, the screen effect and we're hearing the music. This Emmy does not exist, so we don't have to worry about them at all. Um, we're going to come across here. We slide down this ledge and then we go to the left come up through here uh, and then there's a few ways you can route through this generally the fastest is you slide and then you do a jump at the very end there's one of those that's going to be important for a trick later on but as you slide through you can jump as you get to the other side even though you're basically on air and you can get up to this side come up over here uh, we can do another slide jump here just to save a little bit of time uh, it's just slightly faster than if you do a full jump all the way across there you see uh, we come through here, slide down, and go to the left. You'll notice that that locks behind you. This wall, you have to shoot these, so I just tend to shoot at them as I come through here. We're going to slide under here, and then we get this cutscene. And there's no way to prevent this cutscene from occurring at some point throughout the run, just so you know. Um, it's impossible to not get this. If you skip it here somehow, there are ways to do it. If you skip it here somehow, it's just going to show up at some other point. So this is where we get it. You just accept and then immediately break out of that. Uh, and then we're going to come through here. Uh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to try to show you a little trick that you can do here. Remember that slide I was doing a second ago where you sort of slide off a ledge and then jump? Well, you can do that while you're going through a screen transition also. So if I slide and then jump. <laughs> okay, I failed it. But the, the plan there was to slide and then jump so that I was in the air a little bit so that I wasn't in the water quite as long. It saves only a few frames. It's not a big deal if you don't get it. Um, so it's not the end of the world either way. Um, and then also here, I'm actually going to reload checkpoint real quick. It's going to put me right here. Uh, we shoot missiles to clear out all those bugs and that uh, ceiling guy. I don't actually know what his name is. Uh, and ideally, you want to have cleared out most of that by the time you get up to that that ledge there. Keep shooting missiles on the way to the left. Uh, you'll notice me doing these little hops underwater. Uh, it's very, very like one frame per movement faster to do these little hops. Uh, it doesn't really change anything. You don't have to do them if you don't want to, and your time will probably not be any different, uh, but I tend to do them. It's something to do. We're gonna shoot this guy on top. I tend to shoot that guy there as well. And now from here, there's two ways you can go. One is to slide down to the bottom. Uh, here, we'll, we'll just start with this one. This is the easier route. Slide all the way down here to the bottom, shoot this guy. Come all the way over here to the right. Shoot these bugs on your way through. Uh, there's going to be a blob on the right that we shoot. Come back through. I missed those bugs. And come up here. Run through here. Slide down here. Go through the water again. And into the Emmy area. There is another trick you can do that skips the last, the vast majority of that, though. Uh, and this is a slightly more complicated trick and slightly more difficult, so don't feel bad at all if you don't want to do this trick right away. Uh, it saves, if you do it first try, I think it saves like 30 seconds. Um, so it's not nothing, but it's also not like a huge, oh my god, I've got to get this, otherwise the, the route is completely wrong. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm actually going to kill this guy too, just while I'm showing this off. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to slide off this ledge. Um, as we slide, we're going to activate Phantom Cloak. I'm going to jump uh, at about the halfway point down there. I'm going to activate my aim in midair so that I stop spinning because that gets me a little bit more horizontal distance. Uh, and then I'm going to try to do a quick spin jump off of the corner right there so that I bonk my head on that and land where that missile is. Uh, it's very complicated. I will try to link a video in the description that explains it in more detail. There's some very good description videos out there. Um, but it looks... 
Not quite like that. So there I started to slide down. That meant I waited too long to jump. Oops. Let's see if I can get this here. That was almost it. So a big part of learning this trick is learning what you're doing wrong. And I think I'm actually waiting too long to jump as I slide down. As I slide off the ledge. That was almost it. There it is. So you saw what happened was I slid off the ledge as I sl as I started the slide, I did a cloak, just like we're going through those doors from earlier. Uh, I did a jump. I aimed in the air. I bounced off of this, hit my head on that. Uh, and then I would landed right here. And then we'll go ahead and grab this missile tank. We don't really need it, but it's in the way. Um, and this allows me to come through here. And saves me having to do all of that running around and nonsense with the water. And I don't even have water here at this point. Um, again, it's not a mandatory trick by any means, but if you are able to get it, it saves a little bit of time. Uh, the reason for the Phantom Cloak, by the way, it is technically possible to do that trick without Phantom Cloak, but for some reason, Phantom Cloak like slows your momentum or something. Uh, it makes it slightly easier to get some of those inputs and jumps off in that in that trick. It is a fairly difficult trick, though, so don't feel bad if you don't want to do that one and you'd rather just do the running around bit that I showed earlier. So now we come in here, we shoot this guy. Um, again, there's no Emmy here, so we don't have to worry about him. Um, there's another little trick that we can do here. Also, I'll show you a little bit of routing. If you melee off that ledge, you skip that stuff. Um, whereas if you were to slide, you'd hit it and it slows you down a little bit. Um, there's another couple of points where we'll use that throughout the run. But you melee here, we go to the left, we go to the right. Again, we're doing the sliding to get off the ledges. Um, now, in normal situations, what you would do is you come up over here, you stand on that switch for a while. It slowly fills up the water in here until you can slide through there. Um, and that's perfectly fine if you want to do that. Um, but there is a trick we can do that skips that entirely. So what we're going to do is we're going to run at this wall. We're going to jump. At the height of the jump, we're going to melee and immediately jump again. Sorry, I said that backwards. We're going to melee, or sorry, we're going to jump and then melee and then jump again. So we hide the jump, jump, melee, jump again. And that lets you get up here. Um, let's show it again a couple times so you can see a little bit better. But it's jump and at the very height of the jump, so right about when we're about there, you press jump and then immediately melee. So the way that I'm doing that is I've actually moved my finger around so that uh, my thumb is on B and my index finger is on X. So jump, BX, and do like that. And eventually you can get that. Um, most of the time it's ideal to get that on first try, but it saves enough time that even if it takes you two or three tries, you're still saving time over um, over doing the... the Because this other thing, it takes forever. It's like probably 20 seconds in total that, that that trick saves you if you're able to pull it off reliably. So... I usually get it second try, just just so you know. So then we come down here, we slide down. If you had gone through and done the water thing, you would come through here. So the, the route converges pretty quickly again. Then we come through here. And we're coming down to the left. I'm going to fire two missiles and then mash my shot as I come through there. And I was doing that at that slight downward angle. So that way I could kill that guy and mash those shots to break that. We come down here. I'm going to shoot that guy and that guy as I'm sliding down. And then we come in here and we get charge beam. So there's a couple of important things that I need to point out about charge beam uh, before we move on. Obviously, charge beam is it's very nice. It's very good. You charge it up, you do more damage. Um, one thing is you get this like, um, I forget what we call it, pseudo screw or something. Uh, mini screw fake screw. I forget what it's called, but it's basically like a screw attack while you're in the air. If you have a charge going, if you run into anything, you will you will deal damage to it and probably kill it in most cases. Um, the other thing is we have those charge beam doors um, that we will need to open throughout the run. Um, but there's a couple ways to get what we call a quick charge. So you can either do like a quick turn around like right as it reaches a certain point of the uh, animation. Basically, right as you start to see the little circle appear. 
if you turn around, you will get a, a fully charged shot from your turnaround. Um, the other way to do that is to jump. And you'll see me using that a lot throughout this run. Uh, normally, by the time you get back here, that guy would not have respawned. Um, you don't, wouldn't normally have to worry about killing that guy. Um, it's just because I was spending a whole bunch of time in the other room talking about it. Um, so this is another charge door here. So as you're running through, you charge. And then we charge again here because if we let off at just the right time, we can kill that guy with two charges and keep running through. And the indicator that I look for is right as Samus is about to cross these, like, broken pillars or whatever it is on the ground here. You, you run off the edge. I don't slide off that edge, by the way. You run off the edge, you shoot, and then you shoot again, and you will have killed that guy by the time you get to him. So it'll be, it's tight timing, but um, as long as you're, as long as you're charging it properly, then uh, it's, it's pretty consistent. Continue through here. We use missiles to kill these guys again um, because they're slightly faster than charging. Um, and then here we have this charge door. Again, you can do a quick charge with a shot, uh, with a jump. Come up here, kill that guy, shoot that guy on the way down, and we grab this energy tank. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you don't actually technically have to kill either of them. They're just in the way, so you might as well. Do another quick charge here. Oh, normally you won't get this. Uh, <laughs> normally you won't get this again. Uh, so that is, in case you're curious, that's because I reloaded checkpoint on Corpius. Uh, which for some reason resets that cutscene. That's actually used for a glitch in the unrestricted route, but it's not, that glitch isn't allowed in this route, so we don't do it. Uh, but normally what you would do is you would slide through there, just as a tip, you would shoot that guy once. In fact, actually, let me see if I can get far enough away so he respawns so that I can show you it, because it's actually kind of a useful trick. I'm gonna wait until that slug there respawns, and then I'll, I'll know that I can and show it to you. Hmm. Going on a little trip for a moment so that I can show you this uh, slight movement optimization you can make. All right, hopefully that's far enough. If not, we'll just move on. Okay. So if you shoot him once, you can jump over him is all I was trying to show you. If you, if you don't shoot him at all, uh, he will be slightly walking away from you and you will hit him as you jump. But now through here, we can just keep charging the entire time. And most of the time we still wanna shoot, but that guy right there in particular and that guy right there, um, it's helpful to have the uh, charge up so that you have that sort of pseudo screw attack as you run into it. Now we come up here and we're going back up to the right again. We're gonna run through this section a lot in the early parts of this route. Do the slide through, up up here. Uh, and now we are, wait, I have to remember what part of the route we're on at this point. Uh, I believe we're going to, no, we're going to the right there. Okay. Normally, this is like second nature for me. I apologize for that. Normally, it's second nature for me as I'm running through here, but I had to remember what part of the route we were in because I've been stopping and starting so much. So now we're coming through here to the right. We're going to slide through this missile tank, uh, and then we're going to shoot these blobs. Um, there's another trick you can do right here for just a movement optimization thing where you melee off that ledge and then aim. That's just a slight little movement optimization to get over there. I screwed it up the first time. And then there you can do another quick charge to get through that gate easily. Uh, and then here we're going to go down. There's a few ways to like manage getting through this. Um, it's a little tricky either way. Aim slightly down to kill that guy as we run through. And we hop up over here to step on this grate, which enables the, uh, the door that we want to get through in that room that I was just in previously. So that's just a quick little loop around to enable this switch. Um, we're gonna come up through here, recommend charging through there so that you can just run into that guy. And now we go into the left room here. We're gonna have to talk to Adam again because he's just really chatty, I guess. But then we're gonna go through that uh, heat door or thermal door, whatever they're called on the left. 
remember don't save i mean if you save it's not the end of the world just lose a little bit of time so now we're running down here through the left and remember we still have not activated this emmy he still does not exist um and now this gets us to a point where there is this trick is required um so if you are it's very similar and i find it for some reason slightly easier than the one that we did to skip stepping on the platform to raise the water earlier um but it is very much the same inputs with one minor difference. And the reason is uh, we never broke that blob earlier. Um, there is technically a way to do a pseudo wave, I think, to, to get that blob, but this is way easier to do. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to dash to the left. And then you'll notice how if I dash to the left, I kind of fall over the edge. But if as I'm dashing, I hold jump, we get a jump instead. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing we did to skip the water platform earlier, which is melee, uh, jump and then immediately melee. And that should, if I do it right, what am I doing wrong? There we go. If you do it right, you'll bounce off that ledge and grab this wall. Normally, I've actually gotten that first try every time I've tried to do it late lately. I don't know why that was so much of a struggle for me then. But normally that one's fairly easy to pull off. Um, but again, it does. It is a fairly complicated trick. Uh, it is required for this route. So if you uh, if you can't figure that trick out, if you're if you're just not comfortable with it, um, that's totally fine. Uh, then what you should do to uh, deal with that is do the charge beam first route, which, like I said, is in my other video, uh, my other guide video. So I would recommend giving a look through that video. Um, it does miss a couple of the tricks that I've showed off so far. Uh, just because they weren't discovered yet by then but you can go through that video to see the other route so now what we're going to do is we're going to come down here uh we're going to go through this door uh and then just like me every time i walk into the kitchen we're going to forget why we're here and walk back through here because what that does is activates this cutscene, which you can skip and activates that emmy now there's one other important thing we have to do before we can move out of here uh and that is to kill that blob because if we don't then he will literally just sit there forever and we can't fight him you're going to walk onto that, and as you're falling, do a spin jump to bounce off of that ledge. You're going to shoot that door up there as you come through, and then charge to shoot that charge door, and then slide through here. And then this guy, we just pump him full of missiles. He's going to shoot a couple things at us on the left. Um, if you bump into him, that's fine. Uh, and then we shoot him mostly. I tend to shoot him with beams here. I think it's actually faster if you can, like, beam and missile uh, to kill him, but I tend to just beam. We skip that cutscene. Um, uh, there's one other thing I'll show you here. I don't know if it makes much of a difference, but you can do like a melee and then aim and shoot on this. I don't know if it actually makes a difference. Uh, and then here, I'm going to show you a few different ways to do this. The way that I do is do some very fast jumps there. So you can come up over here, jump over top of him shoot him he breaks and then you would break his head there um that's a that's a pretty tricky one to do at first because it requires you to be very very quick on those first jumps um what am i doing so another option the like safer option is to slide down here jump up here come past him at that door and then if you come all the way up here you have plenty of time you see i have basically infinite time to to break him while i'm up here so that that's the safest way to do it uh, i also actually think loading from checkpoint adjusts the timing on this a little bit so um it's possible that the timing here is a little bit more forgiving than it would be otherwise but we'll see I'm going to do the, the other way again, the, the way that I normally do it. It looks scarier than it is. It mostly just requires like specifically good jumping. Yeah, he's not even there yet. Oh, and my shots weren't going through the wall either. That was interesting. But he gets really close to you. You jump over him. You make him flip over. And then you're able to do him that way. And then these cutscenes, unfortunately, are not skippable, so I'm just going to take a sip of water and relax for a second.
So now we have spider magnet. Um, there is one thing that I will note about spider magnet here in a second. Um, but real quick, I just want to note, um, if you, if you did kill the Emmy up over here, you just run down over here to the left at that point. Um, so there's one thing I want to note about spider magnet. Normally you jump up, you grab, and then you can do this, like jump up to the side. But if you jump slightly too soon, let's see if I can do it here. You will instead do a wall jump. That is a frame perfect accident, <laughs> essentially. Uh, it's not quite frame perfect. There's like two frames where you can do it. But uh, yeah, if you if you find yourself accidentally bouncing off the wall instead, it's that you press jump too early. So there's just a little bit of time to get used to on those jumps. But basically, you want to jump up here. We're going to then jump up here and grab this. Uh, try not to just forget and run off that ledge and fall down uh, because that sucks. Let me come up here. And then the reason that we shot this door earlier, by the way, as we were falling down, I didn't have time to explain it because there was an Emmy chasing me. Um, but the reason that we shot this door is that it's one that opens very slowly. There's a couple of other doors that, that are like that throughout the run that I'll try and point out as we get to them. Um, but it opens very slowly. Normally, if you get up here and you're just shooting it as you get up, then you like walk into the wall and you have to wait for it to finish opening. So if you can get that like extra shot in, you need to like, as you're falling from that, like start charging anyway to come down here and open this. Um, so it's it's pretty straightforward, but saves you a, a very minor amount of time. Not the end of the world if you don't get it, but yeah. So then coming in here, we're going to come up this way. I tend to, there's a few ways to handle that jump. I tend to do what I just did, which is shoot up as I'm jumping over to this ledge so that I like break those two and then come up over here. Um, that guy is usually not in the way. If possible, it's nice to skip this missile pack because it's only two missiles. We have 34 already, which is tons. We're going to pick up some missile plus packs, which give you 10. Um, so we don't really need that one. It just saves a little bit of time. Um, and then we step on, we grab that ledge on the side so that we can open up the pathway through and we come back through over this way. This is the third and final time that we'll be running through this specific section in this route. Slide through here again. If you're quick, you can do like I just did there and land on that ledge before the slug gets to it. And now we come down here. And through here. So now there's another trick here um, that I'm going to try to explain. Kill this guy because, I don't know, he was bothering me. There's another trick here that I'm going to try to explain that is not mandatory and you don't have to do it. And in fact, when you're first learning, I'd recommend not worrying about this one too much because it can be a little bit fiddly. Um, but as we go into this next room, and the reason that I am just waiting here like this um, is because... In fact, actually, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm actually going to do a save here. And I'll overwrite um, one of my other files. Oh, wait. I'm not, I can't pick a file. That's fine. I'm going to do save here so I can load from this save so that I can show you a couple of different things. Um, but what we're going to do here is I'm going to slide through that door. I'm going to uncloak. There's going to be an enemy that I'm going to shoot with two missiles. I'm then going to jump off of where that enemy was, like toward a wall. And I will rub up against that wall. I'll do a full jump, rubbing up against that wall. And then do another jump off of him. That will cause me to bounce off of a flying guy like that one. I'm then just going to haul ass to the right um, as I've got my invincibility, like my iframes are going. Um, those will wear off right as I hit a big pink dude. Then I'm going to jump in place where I land after I hit the big pink dude and then do another jump off the off the wall next to it. I know that was a lot to, to take in, um, but it's not something that I can talk through as I'm doing it because it's all very you have to be very quick at it because it's based off of where enemies are at the time. So let me see if I can show it to you. That's embarrassing. So missiles jump. Another big jump here, bounce off the ledge, pink guy, jump in place, and jump off the wall, and I actually screwed it up. Haha. <laughs> um, I believe I kept moving to the right as I uh as I landed from the big pink guy, and so I was in slightly the wrong position. The reason for all this jumping and such, by the way, these like extra jumps that you're seeing, is so that we can manipulate the flying enemies to be in the right positions. 
So let's give that another shot. Where I am not quite as so much in my own head about it. Jump. Jump again. Pink guy, jump in place. And like that. And so that allows you to get up here pretty quickly. Um, that is... That is pretty difficult. Um, so I don't necessarily... I wouldn't necessarily worry too much about uh, doing that right away. I might try to edit in something here if I can to, to show in a little bit more detail what was actually happening here. Um, but the other way that you get through here is literally just jump up here and grab this thing. There will be enemies that are flying around. You shoot them as you come through. Um, but you see how slow this is compared to that other method that I just did. The um, damage boost method that I just did. Either way, you just get through to this other side of this room and you're fine. If you don't want to do the damage boost, don't worry about it, especially if you're just getting started. You can just take that elevator across. Here we just jump up. And we are out of Artaria. And off we go to Cataris. Um, so there's going to be a lot of loading screens like this throughout the run. I always recommend using these as a moment to like take a sip of water, maybe stretch your hands a little bit. Um, my hands can get kind of cramped if I'm just holding a controller for a long period of time. I actually also just keep a fan next to me that I can like put my hand in front of if they're starting to get a little sweaty. But that's one of the nice things about the Metroid Dread speed run is there are those load screens which you can use to sort of rest. Okay, so in typical Metroid fashion, we go left through the wall. Uh, and this, we're just kind of coming through here. That spot right there, if you walk off the ledge um, and stop, you can kind of get bounced backwards, uh, which saves a little bit of time, but mostly it's just going down through that room. Have another atom room. Uh, and depending on a trick that I will show you, but probably will recommend you don't do as a beginner. Uh, this could technically be the last Adam room that we do in the entire run. Um, I will show you a trick. It's called Adam Skip. I will try to show it to you, um, but it's very, very difficult. And if you're just getting started, it's probably not worth going for. It does save like four minutes through the run, though, because you skip all those Adam rooms. Uh, so we come up here. That guy's pretty much always going to hit you. Um, it's possible that he misses, but it's kind of random. We hit this switch. Back through here. Slide down here. Shoot that block out. Shoot this out. Up here, I do a little jump, and then basically I just did a jump charge shot to kill the first one, and then just mash to kill the second one. And then we come through here. There's another damage boost you can do here which I am bad at uh, and failed. But there's a damage boost you can do there to save some time a little a little bit. Um, I'm not going to worry about showing that one off. Um, so here, there's that guy up there, and he's, like, right in the way. So if you jump and grab that, and then grab that, and then jump at him, uh, you can have your charge going as you run into him. Let me show that movement again real quick. You're grabbing the bottom end of the ledge, and then you're jumping up and it will cause you, as you jump off of that, it will cause you pretty much guaranteed to grab this bit here. Um, so if you have a charge going, oops, you have to get it right at the bottom end. So that's what I'm screwing up right there. And then you can jump up over here and you'll have your charge going and, and run into it. There's a couple guys along the edge here um, that I'm just shooting as I come up. Um, and now I'm going to show, I'm going to take these guys out so that I can show you there's two options here. Um, and the this option is very dangerous and only saves you like maybe three seconds. Um, but I'll show it to you anyway, just so you know it's there. Uh, there's a hell run you can do. And by hell run, I mean you are uh, in a lava area without the various suits. So you're slowly losing health the entire time. Um, and it's got to go very quickly. You're going to be shooting a blob. It's uh, as I'm running through, I tend to try and find the angle. Um, which that is not it. It's about like that. Uh, there's going to be a blob you have to shoot right away. 
You run through that, you melee a flying guy, you do a little jumping around, you land on a platform, you aim because you need to stop in place, and then you shoot another blob and then you run through. So let's see if I can, after having talked about it, let's see if I can actually pull it off here real quick. There's that blob. You melee this guy. You jump up here, aim, and then you run through. That is that is a scary thing to do. Um, and like I said, it only saves like a couple of seconds. So uh, if you don't want to do that, like it's it's fun and that's why I do it. But if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. Um, by the way, that guy's only there because I loaded from checkpoint. So you can come back through here real quick. Yeah, I mess. I I need to practice that. There's a damage boost you can do there that lets you get knocked from that enemy back up onto that ledge. I just need to practice it a bit. Uh, come up here, do this whole thing. Shoot these guys, and then the other much safer way to go is to shoot out this blob at the bottom. Slide through here, jump up over here. Uh, you have to shoot these blocks to get through here. And then you just do some platforming. And that blob is where you would have come out if you'd gone through the other side. If you'd done the hell run. Um, we're going to have another... Uh, this is a good opportunity for me to point out a uh, cutscene that you can skip as soon as the screen goes black right here. So you walk through, plus minus, and we've skipped this cutscene. Um, we start a charge. There we go. Shoot that. Um, now that Emmy, I want to point out real quick, actually. Um, that Emmy can be in some very awkward positions. Uh, he was nice to us that time, but that's probably partially because I was, uh, down below. Or because I, I spent so much time standing around. So as we come in here... Skip the cutscene. Jump up. See, I had to slide under him right there to get past him. That's one of the more annoying positions he can be in. So we just keep running through here. We come up here. We're going to shoot before we jump because that's a slow door. And then we come up here and step on this platform. Now, there's another spot that the ME can be in here that can be very annoying. Um, so you want to move as quickly as possible through this next section. So we slide, slide, slide. Okay, he's going to be over on the polite side. Um, so when he's on the polite side, you just run through and that's no problem. Let me see if I can get him to spawn in the annoying spot, though. I'll only give this a couple of tries, but there is a, a very important... Oh, he's in the nice spot again. There's a very important little bit of movement that you need to do. Um, I'll, I'll just show you what it is this time if he's in the wrong spot. Yeah, he's in that spot again. Okay. So if you don't see him on the left there as you're coming through, he's not wandering around over there, then what you need to do is come down here, shoot a bit as you come through there, um, because he will be standing right down here. Uh, and the reason that you shoot as you slide through is to distract him. He will stand in place for just a second, long enough for you to wait for this thing to open and hop up in. Let me show you that at speed. I'll do it even if he's not there. Yeah, he's over on the left again, but come through, shoot here, and you see how my head bonked? Um, that's because I jumped a little bit too soon before that door actually opened. Um, so you have to be pretty quick about it. I'm going to do one more try on this. I, I didn't really want to spend this much time talking about this specific motion, but it is uh, a very frustrating part of the run for a lot of people. So, oh, he's going to do it this time. Okay. Nope, he was somewhere else entirely. Okay. Either way, that's how you deal with that. You shoot that spot. Um, and then you just have to be very quick getting through there. We're going to jump over that guy. We're not going to kill him yet. But we will be right back to him. Um, oops, I forgot to charge. 
You see there, I did a, a quick turnaround charge to hit that button. Uh, we come back through here, we charge again. And now is when we kill this guy because we have to wait essentially for this elevator to come down so we can shoot everything else in the meantime. And we're going to start a charge here so that when I come up through here, I can quickly shoot that door down at the bottom uh, because that is a slow door. Uh, it's a slow charge door. So if you're able to do that, then you're able to uh, save yourself a couple seconds here in a moment. Uh, and then in here, I'm going to run over to a platform and then point up in the air. Um, and if you can see it, that's because see that gate up top that sli slightly started to open. Um, that saves us having to wait for that gate to open in a minute. Come down through here. We slide through here. Uh, I tend to jump and shoot that guy because that way I'm not like bouncing off of him. Uh, but just getting past him is whatever you need. Go down, go to the left, and then we're going to come in here again. But this time we're going to jump up over here. Um, and now here, here is the trick I was talking about earlier. This is called Adam Skip. Um, and this one is very, very difficult. Um, I am still not able to get it reliably myself. Um, essentially what it is, is you're going to jump up, grab that ledge, uh, come over here and do what's called a buffered wall jump, which means that you are technically pressing jump before you hit the wall so that as soon as you hit the wall, you jump. Then you're going to come over here and do another buffered wall jump. Then you're going to hit this wall and just kind of bump up against it for a, like two frames before doing a melee. Then you're going to real quick respin, do another buffered wall jump there, another buffered wall jump there, and then hopefully grab the... Uh, there's another magnet thing. Hopefully grab that all the way up at the top. So let's see if I can actually manage to do it here. Almost. Oh, almost. I thought I had it that time. It's a very difficult trick that I am not very consistent at. Um, and the other thing about this trick that's important to understand... There we go. The other important thing about this trick... So normally that would allow you to jump up over here um, and you come down over there and blah, 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 blah. Uh, it, saves a, it saves a whole bunch of time. Um, the reason that this trick is important... First of all, it saves about two minutes of just running around. Uh, and also it breaks Adam so that you never have to talk to him again in the entire rest of the game, which in itself saves you another about two minutes. Uh, so this that trick um, like that, uh, if I had done what I just did in one of my actual runs, I would probably PB, to be completely honest, uh, that it's it's a trick that you can spend some time on and it will still save you a whole bunch of time. Uh, that said, it is very, very difficult. So for the purpose of this being a beginner run uh, or beginner guide, I'm not going to bother with it. Um, just know that it exists, that it can be done. Um, and it is very, very tricky to actually pull off. Uh, so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys what the proper routing would be. So you would have just come through here, come down here, and we actually go past that. And we come through this way. Slide through here, get past this guy. You can step on that. Come over here, and we do a slide through that. And we do a bunch of wall jumping up here. There's another melee off the edge. And now we're out here, and we see this doggo. Um, you'll see this doggo a second time throughout the run if you're taking this route. If you're doing the Adam skip, you only see him once. Uh, we come up this way. And we run through here. And then there's some basic platforming here you can do. Uh, there's a cool damage boost you can do to bounce off those guys and get to that guy quickly. Uh, but if you're going to do that damage boost, uh, you might as well do Atom Skip because it is pretty tricky. Um, and I would, I would honestly recommend spending the time learning Atom Skip so you don't have to do any of this platforming at all. Um, if you have come through this way though, um, as you jump up here and do this, it's worth like trying to shoot that block just to save yourself having to shoot it later. And then up through here, I keep a charge active as much as possible through here because there are a bunch of things you can run into. Um, if you're slow on any of those uh, movements, however, it can uh, it can really slow you down. And those things can get in the way. 
Now here's an atom that if we had done atom skip, we wouldn't have to talk to. And this is the one that actually causes atom skip to not work, uh, or uh, causes atom skip to function. Because if you don't talk to this atom, uh, he, he just gets confused and he doesn't know what to say in any of the other rooms, so that we don't have to uh, uh, we don't have to talk to him ever again. We continue along through here, come down through here. Uh, he's going to be in an annoying spot here, so that's unfortunate. Um, I haven't actually done that in a while, but there is a way to hold on. Actually, I'm going to load from checkpoint. There is a way to avoid him if he's there. Again, doing Adam Skip means that you don't have to deal with this at all. There's a lot that Adam Skip is advan advantageous for, which is why I wanted to show it off in this run, even if it is a more difficult trick and not really beginner friendly. Um, but what you can do if he's in that position is you walk off this edge and you just cloak and drop right down and you might be able to just sneak past him in that, in that sense. Uh, but we keep coming through here, come up over here, through there. And now we are in the spot that Adam Skip would have gotten us to. Um, because you can see over there. Technically, you probably could do it to go the other direction, but why would you? Um, so if you did Adam Skip, you you just dropped down over here. You that saved yourself that, what, minute and a half, two minutes of platforming and running around and dealing with annoying enemies and all of that. Um, and now you're here. So we just do a little jumping there over here uh, you can ride this up if you want you can also like jump off that wall to get up here it's kind of fine either way um, here actually I'm gonna I'm gonna reload checkpoint because I wanted to show a specific move that I wanted to do there to show you guys um, so as we're coming through here shoot these guys a bunch but then you hold a charge through here so you can let off of it as you enter and then do a respin in the air to hit that other guy. Um, that's just an easy way to make that falling through that section easy. You let off the charge as you're entering the room and then do a respin, you immediately recharge and do a respin in the air. Slide through here, shoot that. If you miss it, you can do the quick charge like that. There are also, there's a couple of like pseudos that you can do to get through that section. Um, uh, to, to hit that switch earlier, but, um, not really, uh, beginner friendly and it saves at most like two seconds. So I don't even worry about them in my runs. Continue coming back through here. We're just going back basically the way we came. Here. Uh, and then we're coming down here. And now this is running. Uh, normally... Okay, hold on, actually. Can I load from last checkpoint now to be able to show you guys this? There's a couple weird things that just happened in this. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back up through here. So oftentimes the Emmy will be standing like literally in the way as you're coming through here. So come down here and he will be right there like that. You jump over him, it's scary, but it's fine. The other thing here that you can do, um, which I've now failed to show you, um, because uh, probably because of all the load from checkpoint stuff I've been doing, but um, you can shoot that guy and then jump at the right time. If you shoot him and then jump like right away, you can do, uh, I'm going to try and get the timing artificially. It's difficult to do with having been, uh, in the room already, but you can shoot that guy and then jump off of the wall and do a quick wall jump that gets you onto that right as it's falling like that. Um, it's tricky timing, uh, but it's pretty straightforward once you get used to it. You just basically you drop down, you shoot that enemy that's there, and right as the enemy dies, you jump on the wall, and then you can you can do that little back and forth trick. Oops. We want to go up here, not down. Slide through here, through here. Okay. Uh, another quick thing that I want to mention here. Um, there is that enemy up there who is super annoying, and what we want to do is we want to shoot those blocks where he would just was a second ago. Um, 
but if we're slow about it, he gets in the way. So a little bit of routing that you can do here to make that easier is as you're running through here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump onto a ledge and then jump straight up onto the like magnet wall, shoot up above me. And if I've tie if I've uh, positioned it correctly as I'm jumping off that ledge, then I can just do a jump and I will go straight up through the open. Let me see if I can pull that off so you see what I mean. Okay, that wasn't exactly it, but it was pretty close. The goal is, let me, let me try and, I'll just kill him so that I can show it to you. The goal is to jump off of that there, do that little jump, and then do like this. And you don't even have to get the other ones. You can just be those two, and Samus will do that little hop. Um, and then as we come through here, this movement you just want to be pretty quick about because of that enemy you see moving around on the bottom. If you do it quick enough, you slide through and it's it's no problem. Um, you want to jump off of this lowest edge of this and just jump up and grab that. Come through here, shoot through the floor, do a charge so that I can jump through that guy. And now we're moving back up to the left again. Uh, we grab this energy tank. And then this is where, if you remember earlier, we stepped on this switch and pointed up. Um, this is why, because that means that this gate is already open. We don't have to wait for it. Step on this switch. And on we go. Jumping up through here to the right. That guy is a little bit annoying. You can uh, charge to just jump through him also. Here, if you do like a bit of an extra hop, sometimes that guy doesn't hit you. And there you can slide and, and do a uh, spin in the air to kill that guy. But that's all just platforming at this point. And now we move on to Dairon. Take the opportunity once again to rest my hands and take a sip of water. So now we continue through here. We're going to immediately jump to the right as we get through that door. Um, and the jumping off the walls there is a little bit difficult, so you just kind of end up having to do the normal climbing. We shot those blocks and we continue along to the left. There's just going to be a bunch of running here for a minute. There's another melee off the edge there, which just saves a little bit of time. Use missiles to kill that guy. I, I managed to not. Uh, we come down through here. I can shoot a missile up left on that bomb to get a little pickup. Um, and then here, I'm going to do a similar trick to what I was trying to show earlier, where I'm going to slide off the edge and then do a jump as I go through the door transition. So slide, jump, and that just saves a little bit of platforming there. Uh, coming through here. That bird down there is very annoying. If you don't have those wall hops and ledge hops absolutely perfect, he will hit you. Uh, so just don't worry about it if he does. Um, and then that guy is also annoying. So as I slid through that opening there, um, I held off, I dropped the left stick. Otherwise I was going to grab that ledge, which is annoying. And then we hit this switch. Um, and now we're going to have that upper bird again that we have to get past. So what I'm going to do to get past him is melee and then slide is just kind of knock him out of the way and then slide. So we come up here, like that. And then we come through here and we get wide beam. You may have noticed I did another slide through an opening and then jump in midair to get over here um, rather than falling down uh, as I went through that opening there. So now we come through here. Um, and now we, we learn about wide beam blocks. This is a little damage boost I take there. So these blocks are obnoxious um, and you will constantly end up missing them and not know why. Uh, and the reason usually is, you see how as Samus lands, she does like a little, find a slightly safer spot to show you. 
Uh, as Samus lands, she like uh, ducks a little bit to like recoil from the landing. Oftentimes when you're missing a wide beam block, it's because she was lower. So the shot ended up being in the wrong exact spot. Um, so that is why as we kill the wide beam blocks, I usually try to make sure that I am completely stationary or completely uh, finished landing before I before I let off a shot. OK, we have another cutscene here that you can skip as soon as it starts. We're going to charge a shot. We're going to release it as we grab that ledge so that we can get through there. Do a jump there. Try to get through that opening so that it doesn't close on you. If it does, you can just go up over top. But um, this is a little bit nicer. We come through here, shoot that block right away. We're going to have one more wide beam charge block here. And again, you, you may have noticed that I sort of waited to shoot it as I was coming through. And then we go back to uh, Cataris uh, because our next upgrade is going to be more fall. And we will be back in Dairon several times throughout this run. All right. So we're gonna head over this way. Kill that guy and break that. Start a charge here. Again, wait until I'm like basically touching that block. Uh, we have to break through this here and we immediately go up and to the right. I'm going to start shooting as soon as I land here. And I'll hold a charge as I get through here so that I can immediately shoot that charge shot at it. Fire missiles. I do a little melee there to to dodge that thing. Um, and then we now that we have a uh, wide beam, it's much faster to not even worry about incorporating missiles there. You can if you're using a turbo controller, but it's not really worth otherwise. So here again, we're going to do this thing. You don't have to do this melee thing that I've been doing. Um, it's just something that I tend to do. Um, and as we go through this door, uh, there's, there's a couple ways to, to beat this guy. I'm going to show you the one that I find to be not only the fastest, but also the most consistent. Um, so as I go through this door, I'm going to start shooting a whole bunch. And that is because I want to break this block as I slide through there. I then turn around and immediately start aiming down at the bottom. And that will allow me to break him. See, he's now breaking. So now I can uh, I can kill him that way. There is a uh, it feels safer, but I don't find it to actually be safer method to do it, which is to come out here uh, and then immediately start shooting like this. And then you can shoot him like as he's coming through here. It's a bit slower because he ends up spending all this time doing the around thing. Um, and then he's going to his head's going to explode and then you can kill him there. Um, I used to do that trick because this other method that I was doing seemed too scary. I, I used to do the kill that way because this other method that I'm doing seemed too scary. Uh, but then I tried the other method and it was actually fine. So we just run out here, shoot that block, immediately turn around to that wall, and then turn back around and start shooting. And this way you're able to just spend so much more time shooting him in the face. Also you'll notice that his faceplate, like, it will fill up entirely. Once his faceplate fills up entirely, you can start charging because he'll finish his little animation and then do the faceplate explosion thing. Um, there is a third way to kill him that's even faster that involves basically jumping down right to where he is right away. Um, but it's faster by like half a second and very scary and not really worth it in my opinion. So I wouldn't worry about that one. But there's two different ways that you can kill that Emmy um, that are both very consistent. Uh, the quote-unquote safer one is just slightly slower. Okay, now we have Morph Ball. Uh, and Morph Ball in Dread also includes Spring Ball. Um, so we're going to come down here a little bit. And the interesting thing that I will note is that much like how you can slide off of a ledge and do a jump, uh, you can also slide off a ledge, morph, and do a jump. So that's what we're going to do here, if I do it properly. 
It's the sort of thing that I, I'm so used to the muscle memory of coming down like this that if you do it properly, there we go. It's it's morph and then jump, right? So you slide, morph, jump. And that allows you to get into that opening, right? Like that. We're gonna come up in here and we're gonna try not to get that uh missile if we can avoid it. Um and if you're going full speed, you will probably unmorph. And if you do unmorph, then it's easy to accidentally grab it. Um, not the end of the world, it's just a, a loss of those couple of seconds where you're getting the upgrade. And now, here we see, in this run, we see the doggo for the second time. Um, if you had done Adam Skip, it would be the first time. And we come through here. And from here, we're going to start a charge as we run through here. We're going to try to stop exactly below that. Um, I messed up the timing a little bit, but if you run right in that room, stop, and... Uh, have a charge going directly below that then you shoot those enemies and you can just slide right through here. No problem um, But I because I was talking I slowed myself down a little bit too much And now we take the red teleportal down to Artaria again uh, and We're gonna head up towards various suits Now, as you come out of here, it feels counterintuitive, but it's actually better to go right first because then way that way when you slide through there, you end up farther to the left. Uh, we come through here and we're going to jump right up in here. Try not to get the E part of shame, which I got the E part of shame, so that's shameful. Uh, then we just jump, jump up over here. Um, killing that enemy, uh, it's ideal if you like shoot him as you come up through here. Through this section, we can just shoot a whole bunch uh, and then slide through these. If you do, if you basically double tap L, um, you'll do a slide and your ball will continue moving a little bit faster through there. Um, in here, there's a shot you can, it's possible to shoot this um, charge door by angling correctly through that, that opening as you jump up. But if not, you just do a quick charge with a jump there, it's fine. And then we want to make sure to shoot that charge door as we come through here also because that saves it from being a charge door later. Uh, and now we have the Varia suit uh, escape. Um, so I'll be moving pretty quickly through this because I have to. Um, there's a couple of little things to note about this. I'll try to call them out as I go through, but there's a couple of jumps that you can do where you morph in midair to save yourself a little bit of time. Um, and there's also a couple of blocks that you can shoot that... Um, sometimes uh, are, are missed. So we're going to start coming through here. I'm actually not going to charge as I'm going through it. Shoot those blocks, slide through here. We do a slide through that, a slide through this. I mass shoot as I get to that corner because there's two blocks actually that you need to shoot. Continue up here. We run to the left, back to the right, shoot that. We do the jump morph there, uh, and then we slide through there, and we're fine. It's, it's not actually as stressful as it might seem. Uh, but there are a few little optimizations you can make through there. And now we come up in here. Uh, we're going to charge here and shoot that door again because it is a charge door. And we, as we slide through there, we're not going to have opportunity to charge. So having shot it with the charge beam, now it's just a regular door. We get various suit and you can skip that cutscene as soon as the screen turns white. It'll happen again with the uh, uh, gravity suit later on. Come through here. And through here, we're going to start a charge as we drop there. And normally I try to get a quick charge turnaround on that. I failed it this time. Um, if you really feel like you need the missiles, you can go down there and get those missiles. Um, but I, I wouldn't recommend it on rookie mode. You have so many missiles already anyway. Come down through here. You can, uh, if you time it right, you can actually do like a quick um, morph and land back in that opening there. Sliding off edges. Here's another one where I do a charge and just spin around and shoot that door because that's a charge door. And then here, if you're able to weave through there with your morph ball like that, that's the fastest way to get down, but it's only by like a few frames. So we're back down onto the red teleportal. 
and we are we are going to end up taking this teleportal in this direction again later on so in terms of trying to remember uh there's a there's a visual cue that i'll use as soon as we get through this um uh loading screen that i'll point out to you uh, that helps me remember which direction i need to go when i come through this teleportal from this direction okay so we're coming through here and uh these blocks just look like regular floor as soon as i step on them now for the rest of the run i'm gonna see this like broken section over there which tells me that I've been that direction already, so I don't need to go that direction again. I'll point that out again later. Come through here, come down here, do a real quick wave to shoot those things. Uh, these guys down below, there is a way to like slide into them and morph right as you hit them. That saves a little bit of time, um, but it's tricky to pull off. It's a frame perfect trick. Um, and then here we shoot that guy. I like to charge a shot as I get through there because it helps with like killing this thing. But that's basically just a matter of like getting through that section, shooting the blobs and moving on. Same with here. We're going to drop down here. We have this gate over here that we need to kill. By the way, um, so you'll notice there's this over here. Um, and there is a way to hit it like once but not a, it doesn't seem to work a second time for whatever reason. If anyone is ever able to figure out a way to do a pseudo wave that breaks that blob, that would allow us to skip Kraid and that would be amazing. I've not been able to figure it out and I don't think anyone else has either, but that, that blob blocks us from getting to diffusion beam early. Um, so coming through here, uh, you can do a lot of shooting in advance so that you break that blob so you can just slide as you get through there. If you don't, then you can just, um, you can just normally go into it. Now we're going to fight Kraid. So what I'm going to do here on Kraid is I'm just going to sort of explain the... Um, you can skip this cutscene right away, by the way. I'm just watching it while I'm talking. I'm going to try to explain the different things that he can do, and then I'll do a load from checkpoint and show like a proper run. So normally you start off, you immediately pump him full of missiles. There's a couple things he can do in phase one. Uh, one of them is this. He like starts puking everywhere. The best way to deal with that is what I'm doing right now. Jump to the left, get a quick charge, and shoot it back to the right. You can also do uh, fingernails. We like fingernails because we get missiles when he does fingernails, and he also stays in place. All right, so now we'll, that's basically all he can do in the first phase. So I'll get him into the second phase. eventually normally it's faster because you've spent the first like entire section of the fight pumping missiles right into his face okay and skip that and now we're here now i like to just stand right where i am and shoot that blob because as you can see these things that are bouncing around if you stand right where you are uh, as you spawn in they kind of miss you um you can do that a lot currently doing that a lot. I'm trying to be able to show other things that he does in this. Wow. Great. You're being so helpful in the wrong way. Uh, this is another thing you can do. If you if you identify it early, you can jump up here and get some like early extra. You just basically get up to the top faster. Uh, and then this is the other thing which you just have to jump. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, there's also like a weird trick you can do where you like jump off the wall and like morph and unmorph at exact correct moments uh, that gets you up there a lot faster, but it's very, very difficult to do and not really a beginner trick, so I'm not going to bother with it. So once you've shot that enough, you will shoot those at the wall and then you can jump on this thing. Now there's a few things to note about this. So fingernail, you're going, first of all, you're going to want to be held, holding L most of the time you're up here so you don't accidentally fall off. Um, he does fingernails again while you're up here. He does two different types of punch. Uh, and even that one is, there's like two different timings he can do for it. Those you just want to make sure you jump over. And then the other move that he can do while he's up here is a parry mechanic. And if he, if he does the parry mechanic, you want to parry it. 
but you don't want to do the cutscene. And so the way that I avoided doing the cutscene there was by, uh, as soon as I parry, I immediately aimed left at the wall. Um, and by the way, just to show you, if you do get knocked down, just start shooting this again and hope that he does this move so that you can jump back up. All right. So that's basically all the theory for Kraid. Um, let me see if I can show you an actual fight now. All right. So we skip the cutscene, pump missiles into his face. He's going to be nice and give me fingernails. All right. Then I just start mashing right at this. You'll see these little blobs tend to die as long as I'm like mashing fast enough. And that's going to also help refill my missiles a little bit. He wasn't kind enough to give me the early spikes so that I could climb up sooner, but that's okay. I'm going to start a charge as I come up here so that I can shoot him on the way up. I missed, but normally that just gets his mouth open a little bit faster. Um, as you're firing these missiles when he's doing fingernails, make sure to like do a little sweep when he does the like upper one. And now here, that's the melee. And you see I aimed to the left and then immediately started firing again so I didn't get the cutscene. And that's great. We do a little jump here and you can do a jump into a morph ball there to get into that opening a little bit faster. Little side there. And now we have diffusion beam. Um, one other thing I'll note about that last little bit of movement that I did there in the event, it's very difficult for this to happen on rookie mode. Oh, by the way, that was a quick charge to kill that. It's very difficult for this to happen on rookie mode because you have so many missiles. But in the event that you get here and you need to break that and you that missile door and you have no missiles, you can just farm off these guys until you get one. Uh, we're going to do another couple quick charges to break that diffusion block. Come up through here. Uh, and now we're heading down into uh, Artaria again. Oh, no, sorry. D Dairon again. Uh, and we'll be getting uh, early grapple. So there's a couple important little things for the routing through here. Um, I'm going to start off immediately by doing a quick charge and aiming down at a diffusion blob so that I can break it open um, with a quick charge. You can see it right on my left there. So we charge, aim down, so that way I get the quick kill. Ideally, you don't land on that thing. You can do a slide into a jump into a morph there to get through that opening a little bit faster. If you try to just jump and morph, it doesn't really work. So you slide, morph, jump, or slide, jump, morph. Any of those work. Uh, as we come through here, we're, you do have to grab this first one to get up there, but then you can do a jump morph here. And I manually unmorph as I get to the end there so that I can slide through that. But also because um, if you're unmorphed and holding right, you will automatically unmorph. You can just shoot down right away as you get through there. We break this blob. We come through here. And now there's an important trick here for early grapple. Um, we're going to do a slide off a, into a jump like you've seen me do a few times throughout the run. Uh, and then we're going to immediately come back to the left and try to jump off of that wall so that we can get all the way up to that ledge you can see right above where that little flying guy is right now. So we slide, jump, wall jump, and come up here. Um, the timing on that is a little bit tricky. It'll probably take some practice the first time. If you fall down into the lava, you can just go back to the left and there's a floor you can shoot through to get back up. In fact, let me just show you real quick. If you fall down into the lava and come back over here, shoot through that floor. And then you can try it again. And I actually failed it this time. So you see, you kind of want to jump off of that, like, darker brown section on the left. Um, and then as we're coming through here, we're going to come to this section, and we're going to do another one. Uh, this time we just do a slide, and then we jump at basically the lowest point that we can so that we can uh, get over to that opening on the other side. If you miss, you can slide off that ledge and try to recover. 
like so. But if you fall down into the lava, you're you're going to die at that point. So we'll do a quick load from checkpoint so I can show all that again. And also because I was about to die. Quick charge, shot down, slide jump ball. Get that open. Here. Let me do slide, jump off the wall. Wow, I missed it. I went too far to the right on that one. Of course, as I'm trying to record the uh, the tutorial video is when I missed the easy trick a thousand times. There we go. It's deceptively difficult. Like these two jumps are ones that you I'll, you'll have done them a million times and you go oh yeah these are easy i just do it and then you you screw it up anyway so you come down here you do a quick charge to kill this uh, or to break open this charge door shoot through that and on we go Okay. So this is mostly just pathing through here. I'm going to run through here, shoot a guy. I'm going to try and morph and do a little weave back and forth. Um, that's just to save a little bit of time. I do want to make sure that I kill that guy as I come through here. Uh, because otherwise he'll be in the way in a second. Come up here, grab grapple beam. And now there's a couple of beams that you're just going to have to move real quick here at the start just to introduce how it works but then as I run through this door up ahead I'm going to be uh, aiming up left and holding grapple as I got through the door and that way I'm able to do a quick grab right there uh, we shoot that guy and then you can grapple that and jump back to the left as you come up through there back up to Dairon. There's a lot of loading areas through this section. So now we have to go through backwards through the section that we just did the reverse grapple trick in. So we're going to run to the left here. Come up here. This first one is easy. You just kind of fall into the lava and die. I forgot to unmorph. Normally, uh, if you're going at speed, you would auto unmorph there, but I like stopped in a second to talk. That's one thing that's worth pointing out about morph ball is uh, if you're just going straight through a section, it will usually unmorph you at the end. But if you do anything while you're going through, like if you jump or if you drop a bomb or even just stop for a second, it will no longer auto unmorph you. It's it ends up feeling very inconsistent to me. Um, and it's one of the things that kind of drives me nuts about this, but it's fine. Um, so. I will also point out, if you don't want to do any of this, you can just break this uh, grapple block here and there's a much easier path back through to the other side. But it is a bit slower because you have to do that grapple block and there's also a missile tank that you have to pick up that we don't want. So you come down here, jump up there. Um, so re remembering what I was just ta talking about with how it will auto unmorph you, um, it will not, having done the jump up here, it will not auto unmorph you at the end. So you could either climb up into the thing like that, like unmorph and climb up into the thing like that. Um, or what I do, since I know it's not going to auto unmorph me, uh, is I know that I need to manually unmorph at the end. Um, there's two ways to handle this jump. Because you got to get back to that thing on the bottom left. If you fall in the lava from here, as long as you've got health, you're fine. You just got to go around under the lava. Um, but there's two ways to handle this. The sort of uh, easier method 
is to jump out, unmorph, and grab the ledge. Um, but you can also uh, unmorph and then press jump as you get out of it. And that way you'll still get down there. Either way, it's just a matter of getting from that section over here to this opening. Um, there's just two different ways to do it. Um, let's see if I can show the other one. So if you unmorph, grab the ledge, and then just jump over to the left, that's fine. Um, but it is a little bit faster to do it the other way. Where you unmorph and then just jump. Because you do have that, like, couple of frames of grace time as you get through the edge. Um, so here, we're going to jump over here, go in the lava, start a charge while we're down here so that it shoots that as we come through. Um, and then same here, we're starting to charge as we run through so we can hit this. Um, and then if we had done Adam skip in this run, we would not have to talk to Adam here. We would just go straight through. So you can start to see how Adam skip really just saves tons of time over the course of the run. There will be several more of those that, um, we have to deal with as we come through here. Uh, so here you can do a jump and then morph and then use your grapple to get over to the left. Um, and then now through here, uh, we're going to come up here. And if this guy is in an annoying spot, we'll have to do some tricks. He is not. Okay. I'm not sure where he is right now. So the ideal path thing is you shoot that, you come up here, you grapple to get up. And if he's in the way, you then stealth here so you can get past him. Then you shoot that wall and come over through here. Uh, I did that wrong. Uh, let me see if I can show it real quick. So if you come through here, you can do a unmorph and then jump right as you get through that. Let me kill these guys real quick so they're not in the way. Like that. Um, that's like the fastest way to do it. You can also, if you if you miss that jump, you can jump off of that ledge like that and get up there. Worst case, you climb up over here to the left. It's not that big of a deal, but just some slight optimizations you can do there. Um, and then in here, we stop for a second so we can jump up. And then I'm going to start charging so that I can shoot that guy and immediately mash. Um, if, you, if you shoot them with a charge shot and immediately mash after that, you get like two hits on them, they will probably die. Um, otherwise, they're a bit of a pain. And through here, we just come down here. Um, and we grab, oops, I missed. We grab this ledge and come up here. Uh, there is a, a crazy like pseudo wave that you can do to hit that right there, but I don't think anyone really does it. Um, and then in here, we're gonna jump up. We're gonna step on this uh, switch and we're gonna try to shoot that blob down at the bottom right as the switch is falling. Even if you get like only one or two hits on it, it still saves you a little bit of time because it, otherwise you end up having to shoot it a whole bunch as you're getting through. Down here, finish that off. And this puts us back in this room. We wanna climb up here. We're doing the same shoot and then mash. Get through there. And then we have bomb. So you're going to see me doing a lot of drop bomb and unmorph stuff through various sections. Um, and that is because I don't want to get knocked into the air, essentially. Because, as you probably know, if you do that, it's slower. So we're just continuing through the left here, going through these things. Um, the first time we see experiment, we run left. Come down through here, shoot that bit of the floor so we can get this grapple. This missile tank is in the way, but it's still faster. And then we come through here. You can melee those things if you want, but it's slightly faster to shoot a missile at them. Or you can just ignore them, honestly. It's just a good way to get some replenishment. And there I did a slide jump, and here I'm gonna immediately morph as I get off the edge here. Um, I'm gonna kill this guy real quick just so I can show you this, um, or try to show you this. As you come across the edge here, there's a way to like, if you get the timing just right, to jump and then remorph in the air, uh, but it's difficult and it's not worth like messing around with really. That enemy 
tends to be very annoying. So you just want to make sure that as you're getting to the point where you can start shooting him, you're shooting him like right away. But again, that's all just slight pathing improvements. Not stuff that has to be mandatory. And now we are heading over to Berenia, where the next upgrade we get will be Flash Shift. And once we have Flash Shift, things get a lot faster. In fact, we get Flash Shift and then we get Speed Boost. Things will start to speed up quite a bit. I'm going to run straight to the left here. Um, as I drop off this ledge, I'm going to morph and then drop a bomb as I get to the bottom because there's an enemy that like will vacuum up that bomb and die. Um, and if I don't, you will vacuum up me. So we slide off the edge. We drop a bomb right there. We go down here through to the bottom. You can do another jump off that ledge there. Um, and then here, as I get through this room, I'm going to do the same sort of like cloak slide that I would as if I was going through one of the doors in Artaria. Um, but there's, I'm not getting past anything by it. There's just an enemy that I want him to not see me right away. Otherwise, he'll shoot a laser and I'll bounce off of him. So I'm going to do the cloak slide and then uncloak. I didn't actually mean to morph there, but it's fine. Do a jump morph into this tunnel. Um, I'll morph out of here. This is another Adam room that if we had done Adam skip, we would not have to talk to Adam here. You can see how that's like 20 seconds each time. It's substantial. Uh, we melee this guy and we're going to morph and fall down here. Um, there's a few ways to deal with this section. Um, there's some fancy like sliding under that guy and jump stuff that you can do. Um, there's a, you can do a damage boost off of him. You can slide down and then grab that to be safe. Um, or you can just kill him like I just did. Um, what I usually do is I try to go for the, like, slide under him and jump off of that. Um, which usually turns into me bumping into him and getting a damage boost, so I end up over here anyway. Um, but yeah, a few different ways to get through that little section. Here, we're gonna jump there just to stay out of the water as long as possible. Climb here. We slide through those last couple of segments. And here we're doing, the move that I'm doing there is specifically, like, letting Samus's feet touch the water but um, jumping as soon as they do so that, that way I get through those water sections quicker. Um, as I come down here, there's going to be a grapple thing that I'm going to try and immediately grab. Um, and if you want, so there's... Um, actually, let's come down here real quick. So there's two, two ways to get to the thing here. Um, you can come up over here and there's like a crazy like... I'm bad at it, so I don't do it. There's a crazy bomb juggle thing you can do there where you keep yourself floating in the air for ages, uh, and then eventually you can get through to the other side. If you do that perfectly first try and don't accidentally land on the switch on your way through to close the door behind you, uh, that saves like 20 seconds, um, maybe 30 seconds, uh, but you have to do it like immediately first try and not land on the thing for that. If you land on the thing, then it only saves you like maybe 15 seconds. Um, and if you don't do it first try, then it, you start losing time from there. Uh, the easier way the, is just to path through here a little bit. We're gonna actually let that guy grab us so that we get this damage boost. And this guy, we just jump over and come down here. Do our little hops here. I tend to wait until I'm right next to this thing to uh, grapple it. And then we just come up here, shoot that. And we have another cutscene we can skip as soon as it goes dark. And now we have flash shift. And now we make sure we're in the air as we're getting through that. Jump over that. Uh, we're going to kill these guys. Um, when you're just starting off, if uh, you find yourself having a hard time. I, so I end up skipping this E-Tank in my runs now, and I only end up with three tanks in total. Um, but for the time being, as a beginner, it's worth grabbing. So you kill those guys, otherwise they're going to get in the way. 
Um, and then you can grab this. Oops, I ran too far forward. You can grab that ledge on the other side. Come up there. Grab the E tank and then flash shift back across. But then you're gonna have, you are gonna have to wait for your flash shift to come off a cooldown because you gotta do another one here again real quick. Um, the safe way to get this flash shift is to jump up here to the left and go that way. Um, but you can also just jump off that ledge. Just make sure you get enough air before you actually flash shift. Morph ball to go under that guy. There is a little damage boost you can do off of him, but it's tricky. Um, and now in here, there's a few different ways to handle this room. Um, I'm going to kill these guys just so they're not in the way so that I can show you a couple of things. Okay. So there is a way to do a complicated pseudo wave. Pseudo wave, which is the, the trick where you shoot things through the wall, um, where you start a charge, turn around. Uh, as you're turning her back around, you pause and do all... I actually don't remember it off the top of my head. It's not a trick that I do, but it's a pause buffered, like... Um, how does it actually work? Turn around, then turn back around, and as you're, as you're turning around, you pause, aim down, unpause, and it will shoot this blob down in the corner there. It's very, very tricky. Um, if you do it perfectly over doing this other method perfectly, it saves, uh, I think it's like 10 seconds. So it's substantial enough that top runners will do it, but I wouldn't worry about it. If you see it and runs, uh, that's what that is. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here. We'll morph down here, shoot this blob real quick. We're gonna stay morphed as we come across here. Um, and I'm going to drop a bomb here and let it hit me and unmorph me in air. That's to set up a trick in a second. We then just shoot charge shots through that to break the other one. Uh, and we come up here. And now there's a trick we can do here. It's not mandatory, but there's a trick we can do here called a water bomb jump. Um, and this one is tricky. So uh, explaining it a little bit. Normally, uh, if you try to do like an infinite bomb jump underwater, it doesn't like you. You see how like after time, after a little bit of time, it stops letting me get more air um but what you can do is if you are if you bounce yourself off the ground and unmorph while in air you can then do a trick oops i screwed it up you can then do a trick where you remorph in the air after dropping another bomb so you jump morph bomb jump again morph and then get hit by that bomb but you see how there it didn't actually bounce me in the air? That's because you have to prime it by letting it bounce you off the ground first. So what we want to do is get over there. Now what we could do is climb up over here and come up over here and come up over here and drop down. But that's slow. Uh, if you don't like this water bomb jump trick, absolutely do that. Um, but instead what you can do is you can jump, you can prime your water bomb jump by letting it bounce you off the ground. Jump in the air, morph, drop a bomb. So let me let me explain it so that I can then do it because I don't think I'm going to be able to talk through it as I'm doing it. Uh, you're going to jump, drop a bomb, fall back to the left to land on this platform. Un sorry, jump, morph, drop a bomb, unmorph, fall back to this platform, jump again, morph again, and then unmorph in air so you can grab the, the ledge. So let me see if I can pull it off here. Okay, I fell down the ledge. Almost. I was too far. So one of the easy things that is easy to mess up on this is being too far to the right when you start it. Um, this trick is, it's not the most difficult trick, but it is fairly difficult. Um, and we're going to do water bomb jumps at a couple of other points throughout the run. There we go. That's what it's supposed to look like. We're going to do those at a couple other points throughout the run, but they're not at an angle. This one is at an angle, which makes it extra difficult because you have to be going left and right. Um, normally, normally, uh, it, it's very easy to practice if you just do it like, like that. So the inputs are basically Y, unmorph in air, jump, L, Y, L, jump, and L, er, uh, jump and L again. So, uh, like that. 
So you have to prime it first by bouncing yourself off the ground and then do that whole thing. Um, again, I have I have had runs where trying to do this trick, I lost more time than I gained because I could have just gone up and around. Um, so if you're just starting out and you just don't feel like it, don't worry about it. But um, it is a good trick to learn because you are going to have to do that in a couple other places. And now we have flash shift so we can get through these long sections a little bit faster. Um, good rule of thumb for flash shift versus speed boost, which we'll have in a minute. Um, if you have, if you go through two full rotations of flash shift, it probably would have been faster to speed boost. So you, that's flash, 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 wait for it to recharge, flash, flash, flash. If you get to that third flash, then it probably would have been faster to speed boost. But not always. That's just a general rule of thumb. All right. So we're going to flash shift through here a lot just to go faster. Keep rolling through here. Um, now this guy here, you actually have to not go too fast. You could... Uh, I could have used a uh, grapple to get up there a little bit faster, uh, but it would have actually caused him to be on the wrong side and he would have hit me. So we're continuing to just flash shift through here, just going as fast as possible. We're going to jump off the wall and flash shift back to the left there, and then flash shift into this room. And this is probably the most annoying of these like nephew brain fights, just because there's so much stuff coming at you and it has the most health. You see how I'm like jumping around constantly? It's not like difficult, it's just annoying. Uh, and now we have flash shifts, so I'm not going to do the melee dash thing anymore. Okay, and setting up for this Emmy kill, what's going to happen is I'm going to flash through that opening. Uh, and then I'm going to immediately jump up onto a ledge and immediately start firing at a slight up left angle. So we jump up on this ledge and we immediately start firing up here. Because if we don't, he's going to be super fast and come over and kill us. And getting used to that angle is difficult. So that one will probably take some practice. Um, but it is the most straightforward of the ME kills in that it's literally just you just go right out the door and immediately he's right there. Long, unskippable cutscene. And now we have speed boost. So there's a couple of important things to note about speed boost um, before we continue. Um, okay. So you click in the left stick to activate speed boost, and then you press down to shore, store a shine spark. Okay. That's pretty straightforward. But one important thing to understand about it is there are quick ways to activate that shine spark. Normally, you activate it, you do this big, like, charge up animation. Um, you can cut that charge up animation short by doing literally anything else. Um, and then it will just do the shine spark immediately after that finishes. And so there are certain things you can do that are faster than that animation. For example, uh, you can melee. And that will make it go a little bit faster. Um, if you are... Weirdly enough, in the air and you aim, that can make it go faster. Um, even the actual process of storing the Shine Spark itself is considered uh, something that will cut that short. So if you're very quick about it, you can... Oops, I managed to jump to the side instead. If you're very quick about it, you can do a very fast Shine Spark like that. Um... So you'll see a lot of that throughout the run uh, as we continue forward. But yeah, like that sort of it's very, very quick. You have to down and then immediately up and push the button. But yeah, few few different ways to just speed up your timing a little bit, um, some of which end up being kind of important. So for now, we just go right a whole bunch. We're going to do this nice little jump off the wall here, slide underneath back and forth along here. Um, and if you want it, you can take this missile tank up here. We're going to charge that shine spark, slide over here, 
and then try to re try to reactivate it as we get to here. Um, I screwed up a little bit. You're supposed to uh, have flash shifted over, so I'm gonna I'm gonna redo this a little bit to show you what that's like. Um, that missile tank is probably not necessary in rookie mode, but it is there. Um, and this this shine spark is actually a really annoying one to try and redo. So if you if you do mess up this shine spark, um, don't worry about going back and doing it again. Um, but what we're going to try to do is come up here, store it, come up here, blow that up, and then try to reactivate it there. So we can come here. And here we're going to actually morph before we do the shine spark. So we go upwards because that skips a cutscene. And then we grab this energy tank. Uh, and normally that's the last energy tank that I grab in the run and I wouldn't have grabbed the other previous one. But while you're just starting out, it's there's no problem with grabbing a couple of extra energy tanks. Um, here we're going to do the same jump, flash towards the wall and jump off of it trick that we did to get into the uh, Emmy room earlier. We jump up here and immediately start a char uh, speed boost again. We go way to the left, we jump up, we jump up, we jump up in here and we're going to aim and stop and grapple. Um, that's another important thing to note about Shine Sparks is that uh, if you aim it stops you right where you are. Come up here, normally I would have done a couple flash shifts to get up here. And now, we are headed off to Ferenia. So in this next little bit of platforming we're going to do here, um, there is a shine spark that you can like hold and saves you a little bit of time, but it's really tight timing and very complicated. So I'm not going to bother with it right now. Um, instead, I'm just going to show you what I would consider the normal path thing. We flash shift to the wall over here. You can use that grapple block if you want. I usually just flash shift over to the wall to grab into this. Jump out of that opening, come through here. Uh, ideally flash shift off of that, but I'm like going slow. Uh, you can shoot a missile, and usually a single missile will break all those guys. And we grab this, come up here. This is a very long cutscene, or a very long loading screen for some reason. We jump, shoot a missile to break that guy. Um, and then we're going to jump and flash shift over that, and it'll fly, slide us down into a boss fight. But I'll explain what's going to happen real quick. Um, basically, I'm going to hide up in a little section so that he jumps up to try and get to me. Uh, and then I'm going to run down to the lower section charge a shine spark and immediately boost into him um and if i manipulate him properly by getting him to run over to the left uh and i do the shine spark twice properly um he dies in two shine sparks and it's a very quick boss fight um the timing is a little difficult and some of the positioning can be a little difficult um but let's try and see what happens skip that cutscene. i'm gonna immediately come up over here and i just crouch in this corner wait for him to start to do something shine to the left and I messed up the speed boost. That's why I say the timing can be a little bit difficult because you need to store it like immediately. Um, and also if he jumps down on you like that, that can uh, screw things up too. We shine that and I do the melee to uh, get the fast speed boost. Wait for him to do something up there. Do the same thing again. And there we are. Another cutscene there to skip. Um, if you're having difficulties with getting him to stay up here long enough by just crouching in this platform, you can also come up here and just be a ball. And then as he jumps up to you, you roll off the edge and unmorph. Um, not like that. You want to be more still as you roll off the edge, but you can roll underneath him and unmorph. And that gives you a little bit more time because he starts to hop back down after you. Um, but as long as you're up over here and you give him just long enough to start doing something while he's up there, you should be fine. Come over here. Another very long load screen. Uh, and then we're going to go uh, up here. And then, okay. Uh, we need to do a speed boost here to get past this fan. If you screw up the speed boost at any point through it, that's fine. You can just keep going. Um, but if you do it well and morph in midair and don't do what I just did, uh, it's possible to hold that speed boost until you get to this section and break through those blocks, which saves you a very small amount of time. Let's see if I can do it properly. Oops. Oh, 
don't know why I'm getting so much extra height on my bomb jump right now. Or my ball jump. Oops. There, like that. So you have to actually wait to morph until later on, otherwise you get too much air. Um, you can also, if you really want this um, missile pack, you can also store that shine spark here, slide over into that corner, and then uh, explode it. Obviously, you can also explode it that way if you want, but it's just slower. If you if you don't get that um, ball thing, then just slide over here. It's faster than waiting for the bomb to go off. I'm gonna come over here to this, and we're back down to Dairon. And we're going to have another atom room right away that, again, if we had done atom skip, we wouldn't have to sit through. Um, and then we're going to have to shoot a, a wide beam block. And that wide beam block is how I remember. Uh, it's the sort of visual cue that I use to remember this part of the run, because we're going to come through this section again later through this elevator in this exact section. So here we talk to Adam. Uploading data. Again, you can really start to see why Adam skip saves so much time. So then we shoot and we start to charge and we shoot this. And so I remember if I've pushed that left, I need to go left. If I haven't pushed that left, then I need to go right. So I come through here and I'm going to flash shift through here a bunch. There's a few different ways to get through this section. Uh, I'm just going to show you the one that I find easiest to remember because it's basically just go left until you see experiment um, and then go right. So you go left, you go through that, hey, experiment, and then you go right. And you come down here and now we're off to the left. Now I jump there before I flash shift through so that that way I can make it through that ledge properly. Just a slight optimization. Another thing you may notice is that as I'm flash shifting, once I reach the end of a flash shift, if I'm in the air, I will uh, press jump to respin real quick. Um, and that just helps keep Samus from slowing down too much. Because otherwise she will slow down as she uh, ends her flash shift in the air, if I'm about to get on the ground. So now we're headed back to Berenia again. Uh, we're going to go through the same section that we did earlier. Uh, there's a couple things that I'm going to show you that are a little bit tricky. Um, but if you can pull them off are great. By the way, you would have normally flash shifted through all that. And again, we're going to drop off here and drop that bomb. Um, side note, uh, it used to be thought, and I think I even said this in my previous video, it used to be thought that speed boosting through here was faster. It's not. Uh, come down through here. This is faster. Same way that you did before. Um, and so now through here, there's a speed boost that I'm going to do that involves uh, some pretty tight jumping. So I'm going to speed boost through, jump on the wall, jump back towards, uh, like just do a wall jump so that I can reverse the direction of my speed boost. Uh, I'm going to land on a ledge and I'm going to, as I land on it, jump and immediately morph so that I can get into a tunnel. It's a very, very tricky speed boost, um, but it's very, very helpful if you can get it. Uh, then I will come out of that tunnel and try to continue doing some, uh, some speed boosts, jumping off walls and stuff. Uh, it just saves a bunch of time because otherwise you're going through a tunnel very slowly. So come through here. And it looks really flashy and cool because it is really flashy and cool. But that was a lot of very tight timings and jumps. If you don't get it, don't worry. It's just you get up here slightly slower. It's a thing that you can add into your repertoire later on. Um, but you can see how much faster that it like here. I'll, I'll go and redo it the slow way.
Like if you compare that to the slow way. Even if I was using flash shift through there, like this tunnel takes forever to get through. So again, uh, just to point out what happens in this corner, because it's really complicated and weird. I'm gonna kill these guys real quick so they're not in the way. Okay, he's gonna be annoying. All right, whatever. He's being annoying. There we go. Cool. Um, so what's happening in this corner is I'm basically jumping, jumping, and then as I land on this ledge with the speed boost, I immediately jump and morph. And I screwed it up there. I didn't actually get the morph off. But you can see how I kind of grab and like vault over the ledge a little bit. Oops. Here's another thing to point out. This ledge here, if you start speed boosting before it as she vaults it, that will cancel the speed boost. So you kind of have to mash L stick. And then I unmorph and then I remorph to go in that that tunnel. Um, there is technically a way to keep that speed boost going all the way up through here, but it doesn't save any time. Now, there's another speed boost here that you can do. Um, that the, the boost itself saves time, but there's a there's a trick at the end, which I'll talk about in a second. The trick at the end, which doesn't actually save time. You can speed boost through here and get to this point. Now, it used to be the case that people would, and, and some people still do, save a shine spark here, jump up here, try to open this, uh, jump up in here, flash shift over here, and then go into a ball and so that they could use the speed boost to go along through here. Um, but we recently learned that that's actually like a few frames slower than just doing it normally because of the amount of time that you spend on the um, animations for it. So instead what we do is we come through here, we slide and you just mash flash shift as you get through there. Ideally you don't get hung up on that guy and that's the reason why people thought that the uh, speed boost method was faster. Um, but if you do it fast enough you, uh, you just get right through there. So now we're going to do, and because I'm low on health I'm actually going to take this recharge. Um, now we're going to do what's called drag skip. This is another uh, pseudo wave. So the way this one works, the setup is a little bit different. So you're going to have a charge going. You're going to slide into the wall. As you slide into it, you're going to turn around and back around again. And as you're turning around the second time, like back towards the wall, you let off. So you slide in the wall, turn around and back. And you also need to aim at a slight downward angle. If your shots are going that way, it's because you're letting off the button too soon, which I'm now doing repeatedly. Wow. I haven't had this much trouble with drug skip in a while. And if you see the shot coming out the other side, it's because you were at two of two. You didn't have the downward angle that you needed. But there you go. Um, so that's drug skip. It's uh, it's a pain. Um, and it takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, and it's one of those that the faster you get at things, uh, weirdly, the harder it gets. Uh, so now through this section, there's these enemies. You can see one of them flying around up over there. Uh, by the way, this this skip, uh, this pseudo wave skips the entire Dragiga boss fight, which is why it's called Drag Skip. Um, but what we're going to do through here is we're going to slide through and we're going to Phantom Cloak. And then we're going to jump and shoot up, shoot over to the left here uncloak so that we're not taking damage and come over here to the left. That's another one that takes a little bit of practice in getting used to, um, but once you get used to it, it's pretty pretty straightforward. And in fact, some people do it even without cloaking. But the reason for the phantom cloak is that that way the enemies don't see you, so they're not shooting at you or moving around weirdly, which makes it easy to move past them. So next up, we're going to have another Chozo robot fight. Uh, but this one, we're only going to be able to get one Shine Spark for. So the rest of it, we basically just have to pump damage into him. Um, there's a couple ways to handle this section here. So uh, one that you can do is just run over there and jump up. 
Um, it is also possible there's like a... You do a speed boost properly, uh, but it's a little bit tight and I tend to just not bother with it. So what I do is I just jump up and grapple. Over here, you can do a slide and jump with a morph ball to save a little time there. We need to kill this guy. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, because we need to charge a shine spark here. So we're going to start running through here. I'm holding down now so that I charge this immediately. Run to the left and pump into this guy. I'll show you that again real quick. Because basically the boss doesn't spawn until you get on that lower section. So you charge the shine spark. It's charged, but now I need to come down over here. Then I jump in the air and press both Y and B at the same time to uh, to do the shine spark in midair. And now you just pump missiles at him and try to dodge his stuff. You can uh, parry that if you need to. Some of his shots you can like slide under. But it's basically just fighting him until he dies. He can be a bit of a pain, but that went fairly well. And here we just grapple up like that. Come up in here. Immediately jump up to the left to grab that. Flash shift over. There's a couple of blocks there that you can shoot. And then uh, we hop up here. And now I will immediately start a speed boost here so that I can just run through that guy. This is another atom room that we would be able to skip if we had done atom skip. Uploading data. Sam with the M1. And now we're heading off towards super missiles. Run down here to the left. As you come through here, if you hold up as you roll out of that opening, you just immediately grab this and slide over. You want to flash shift over there. Shoot this here, and now we drop a bomb. And now you want to try and flash shift through here. I may have screwed it up because I got hung up on the arm. You want to try and flash shift through there so that as you leave, you can flash shift back out. Otherwise, you have to reopen the door and it just slows you down a little bit. Oh, I actually managed it. Um, and then we come up here. And now we have super missiles. So we can do that. Uh, one little tip that I did there, as I grabbed into this to avoid the auto unmorph. Um, so normally you would auto unmorph as you come through there. But as I get in there, I do a quick jump. And that avoids the auto unmorphing. So that way I can just jump up in there. And now this door, you're going to shoot with a super missile. You're going to shoot normally and then you're going to start a charge. So that you can take all of them out with one charge shot right away. Um, this is another one that... I always forget to do it, but you can do a ball jump in the air. Then through here, we're going to jump and try to just flash shift right underneath that whale. Otherwise, this room is kind of a pain. And there we are. So now we're heading over into Elon to A, set all the X free, um, and B, get a uh, get plasma beam. One very important thing that I'm going to note, uh, there's a lot of crashes that can happen in this game, uh, and they mostly seem to start once you've let the X loose. So for me, one thing that I do to try and help with that, uh, and I haven't had any crashes since I started doing this, uh, anytime I make it to Elon in a run, I will completely close and restart the game after that run. Uh, I don't know why. I don't understand why these crashes happen. I've lost some very good runs to those crashes before. Um, but now that I've now that I've started doing the just restart the game every time I get to Elon, uh, I have not had a crash since. So here, um, this is an area that it seems like it should make the most sense to use speed boost, but because of a couple cutscenes and door openings, we're actually going to uh, flash shift. And then we also drop a bomb, we drop a bomb, drop another bomb, and we come through here. Shoot this blob, and we're going up and to the right here. 
There's another cutscene to skip right there. Um, let me point out what I did just there, actually. Because it's a tight little timing that can help you get into these. So, okay. Um, when you flash shift, you can't immediately morph out of a flash shift. But if you flash shift, spin, and then morph, you can. So as I'm coming down over here to drop this bomb, I, I do a flash shift, spin, and then drop the bomb. See? Uh, I'm coming through here. We're going to flash shift over here. Um, you can do, like, a jump over these guys to, like get past them, but most of the time you're probably just going to bump into them. But you can like do a jump and morph to get over top of them. Uh, and then you have to manually unmorph there. And we come up here and get plasma. Come back out through here. Um, now, one thing I'm going to point out about this next room before I get into it, um, there's a very tight timing where as long as you flash shift right away, you're fine. Um, otherwise, there's some enemies that get in the way. Uh, so I'm going to open the door, and as soon as I go through it, I'm going to flash shift to the right so that I can get past the... Uh, there's a couple of the flamethrower enemies. And there I used a jump plus the uh, grapple beam to get to the wall. Uh... I'm not exactly sure what happened there. <laughs> okay. Well, that's fine. I'm going to have less health than I'd like. Oh, actually, no, I'm fine. Okay. So now we're going to fight our first uh, Chozo X warrior. Or whatever they're called. Chozo X, I guess. Uh, and this is where mashing starts to be a thing. So you're going to see me doing a lot of this. And again, that's just me with both of my thumbs over the Y button, rocking the controller back and forth in my hand. And then I'll like move my thumb over to the stick again and then do some more shooting. Um, if he's ever on the wall though, I have to do that with just one thumb because I can't double mash like that with while I'm aiming. Anyway, uh, let's see anything else that I should mention about this fight before I get in there. Uh, you might see me take damage intentionally a couple of times. Um, that's not something that you have to do. It's just ways that you can, you can save some time. Um, and then also, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So let's just go ahead and do it. And if I remember anything, I will call it out. So you see, I'm just firing very fast into it. Um, if you don't want to do the mashing like at all, you don't have a turbo controller and you don't want to deal with the mashing, you can just shoot him with missiles. It's also fine. It's just a bit slower. And then we do his little parry sequence at the end. And that's that. This is also, that's the one that has the most mashing involved because he's the only one that we fight where we don't have storm missiles. Um, so you'll see me use storm missiles on a couple later on in the run. So we come out here. Um, if you want this uh, E-Tank, you can take it. It's not very far. And we come out here, we skip another cutscene, and then we just speed boost our way to the end. And then we use tap L to stop on a dime right on the, or yeah, L to stop on a dime to uh, end our speed boost without sliding. And then there's going to be a cutscene that plays after this, which is the hardest one to remember to skip. But whenever you're leaving Elon, uh, there's a cutscene that we have to skip here. You can actually just be sitting there on that load screen, mashing plus and minus also to, uh, to get out of it. Okay, so we have to go past the whale again here. Um, and there is a speed boost that it's a little bit tricky, but I will try to show it. So you open this. 
And I screwed it up. Basically, it just lets you get up through this section a little bit faster if you pull it off. Now we have to talk to Adam again, which again, we would not have to if we had done Adam skip. Uploading data. There's another speed boost that you can do through this section also, but it's very, very tight on the timing and I find it very difficult. Um, so I don't do it. Um, but we get up here and we're kind of tight on the timing here because uh, Blue Emmy is wandering around. But just some basic movement up through here. Okay. Um, so we're going to have to do another water bomb jump here. There's a slight optimization that you can do in terms of how you get there. So as you if as you're walking off of a ledge, you go into morph ball form, you get a little bit of extra distance. You can see there. So that's what I do. I just use that morph ball to prime it. Um, and then we just do the jump bomb back up again. So again, that's morph ball prime it by letting it knock you into the air and unmorphing in the air. Then you jump morph bomb unmorph jump again morph and let it knock you up so like that and then like that this one's a much easier than the other one because we're not doing it at an angle uh, and then this movement through here is kind of tight just because that guy's in the way um so it's just a matter of getting used to it um there's a couple different ways you can move through there as well um that's just the route that i take with just the one flash shift in it otherwise i have a tendency to overshoot and then fall back down if you do fall back down, it's honestly probably best to just kill that guy because otherwise he's just going to be in the way the whole time. Uh, there's one other final thing we do here, which is we shoot that. Uh, and the reason is we want that door to be open when we're about to fight this Emmy so that he will path up through there. He also might be right down here like this, in which case you just move back and forth a bunch and then run into this room as quickly as possible. We want to open this by starting with a, uh, in fact, I'm going to, I'm going to load from checkpoint again real quick so that I can talk about that a little bit more. Um, as we get to this brain fight, you want to be, uh, charging a shine spark as you get into this room. Um, like you just saw, if the Emmy was down here, you can just wiggle your stick back and forth real quick and that'll break you out of it. And you still have time to like start charging it. Um, if you get in the room and you don't have it charged, it is possible to charge it while you're in the room, but the timing is incredibly tight and there's a lot of things flying around that can mess you up. So usually in that case, you're just going to have to shoot it with missiles. Um, but as long as you start by charging into the room, you get the shine spark, you go underneath him, do the melee thing, and that instantly breaks his uh, shield. And then you just shoot him, finish him off. Now, there's a, what's going to happen as we get through here, let's see if I can show you on the map, actually. We're going to want to get underneath here, and there's a ledge up over here that we're going to want to stand on. And that's where we're going to fight the Emmy from. There's several ways to get there. Um, I'll show you a couple of them. Uh, so the most straightforward one, you run through here, you slide under this, jump up here. Oops and flash shift over and then he'll be up there there's another one you can do that i think is slightly faster that involves storing a shine spark so you slide through here and then you spark up upright and then he's already there um and the reason for that is the faster you get to this corner, the less time he spends walking the wrong way before he eventually turns around. Also, uh, the reason that we opened that door earlier is because if you haven't, if you haven't broken the charge seal on it, essentially, uh, he will not consider that door to be an option that he can climb through until you get up over there and open it. But if you have shot it before you go through there, He'll start climbing that way as soon as you're up in that little pocket, which is why he was able to be there so quickly for me to be able to start shooting him. But other than that, it's just uh, it's very similar to the yellow Emmy. You just shoot him on the ceiling. Um, he's just a lot slower, uh, but takes a lot more shots. And now we have ice missile. 
gonna do some flash shifts to get out of here. Shoot this, aim down and shoot a bunch there, and then morph just for a little bit of extra time. Uh, this room here, I always forget about, but there's that guy that you wanna like get past. Uh, and then here, we're gonna climb up. Uh, you need to shoot that with a ice missile. Uh, I try to be fancy, do it like that most of the time, but you don't have to. Um, and then this one is a long one, so it's worth using a speed boost to get to it. Otherwise, I think that's three full rotations of the um, uh, flash shift. So the next thing we're getting is a uh, space jump. And that involves a complicated, but once you understand it, fairly straightforward pseudo wave. There is another method you can use that I will show you that um, is much slower and, in my opinion, much more difficult, but I, I will show it to you. Um, I'll show that first so that we're not interrupting things. Um, so we start off by you just speed boost to get over here. You can jump at that door to um, save the speed boost. But if you come down through here, uh, it's one of these around here. There it is. Come down here. You can see I haven't done this like in a long time. Um, but right up in that corner there. Is a. Um, a series of three bombs. And you can do this like really complicated. I've never actually been successfully able to do it. You can do this really complicated sec series of like jumping up there, dropping a bomb. If you fall down at all, the timing is already messed up. Uh, I find that incredibly hard to do, but it is possible. Um, and that was what people used to do before this um, pseudo wave was discovered. Uh, people also used to think there wasn't a consistent setup for this pseudo wave, but uh, we now know that there is one. So what we're going to do. Um, again, I'm going to start a speed boost. I'm going to jump at the wall this time so that I can keep that speed boost so I get over to here. And normally I would have started started a setup for it by now. But what we're going to do, we're going to melee at the wall and hold L. So that way we get into this position. You want it to be right into the wall, holding L. Um, and then we're going to start charging a shot. And we're going to try and position right in between you see there's like this little nook of like green that you can see right where my uh uh arm cannon is right now and then like this other end of it over here so if we call that a tile we want to be aiming right in the middle of that tile right like this um and then we're going to watch the guy below us and we're going to not shoot but un uh, but morph at a certain time which will shove us through the floor and uh, shove the cannon through the floor and allow the shot to go through the floor and hit him. Uh, and the reason this works is we're going to watch for a certain part of his animation. We have this certain specific angle. And what will happen is the shot will hit at a certain spot where it's just close enough to that blob over there that the diffusion beam, beam sort of splatter uh, reaches it and breaks it. So what I'm watching for specifically, if you keep your eye on the uh, little claw enemy that's below the blob and to the right of it, I'm watching for it to reach way forward like that, come back, wiggle a little bit, and right as soon as it's done with that first little wiggle after the way forward reach, which it just did again, there's that little wiggle. So basically we're watching for way forward, wiggle, and morph. It, honestly, right as he's ending the little wiggle. Way forward wiggle morph would be the, the aiming that I'm going for. Um, and um, while I'm doing this, I'm also having to keep my uh, uh, angle on this shot at pretty much where I have it right now. And then I will, like I said, I will be going into morph form and not in not just releasing the shot because going into a ball forces the shot through the floor. So we watch for our timing here. And what happened there was my angle was wrong. 
So if it splatters on the ground next to you as though you haven't even uh, morphed, uh, that means that your angle was wrong. So keep the angle right about there. It's really easy for you to like slightly drift. Okay, so there you saw it went through and it hit him, um, but it didn't splash over into the um, bomb. That usually means that my timing was wrong. So keep trying. And there it is. So that's what you're aiming for here. <clears throat> Um, I'll go ahead and uh, load from checkpoint so I can show that again. <clears throat> and I'm going to try to do it at full speed this time. Because the first setup for it is pretty soon after you enter the room. It's a very complicated trick. There's lots of uh, videos that show it in, in detail. I'll try to link some of them. We get the angle. Nope. There we go. <clears throat> it's like you want to morph right as he ends the wiggle. Uh, we need to kill all these because otherwise they're going to be a pain in a second. We climb up here with our grapple beam. Jump up into this. And now we have space jump. Uh, and this is why those guys would have been in the way, because we need to space jump over here. Now, where we need to go next, that, like, spot that looks a little bit different on the wall there is a bomb block that we can break open. But this guy's in the way, and there's also the guy on the top in the way. So what we need to do is shoot him with an ice missile, hop over, and then almost like doing a water bomb jump, uh, you jump, morph, drop a bomb, unmorph to land on the guy, uh, and then jump back up again. Uh, you can also, that flamethrower enemy in the upper right, you can use him to do like a little uh, damage boost over. Like that. Um, but it's not necessary. It's like maybe a couple of frames faster. So we come through here, we shoot these. We're going to come out of here and shoot the floor. And we're just kind of pathing through here. Break through that grapple block. Down we go. It's faster, by the way, to flash into that wall than it is to slide down. Uh, we shoot this. Come through here. And now we head back down to Thyron again. So this is an elevator that we went down earlier. Um, this was the one that we went through right after getting speed boost. Uh, so you remember earlier I said uh, that we were going to have to... That I used the trick of if I've shot the block left, then go left. Otherwise, go right. Um, you're going to see what I mean by that here in a second. Because our next upgrade to get is screw attack. So we come through here, and that's the block I was talking about. So it's already left, so I need to go right. So we come down in here, and we go to the right. Um, one thing I'm going to point out, actually, as we're going through this, that I'll mention. Um, when you're speed boosting, if you... You will maintain your boost if you jump. You will maintain your boost if you are in a morph ball form. Um... But if you run off the edge of something, you lose your boost. See? So the reason that's important is that the way to maintain your boost... Actually, it'll be easier for me to show you if I go this way. See how I lost my boost as soon as I landed there? Um, 
The reason that's important is because if you instead go into morph ball form, you maintain it because you won't lose your boost as long as you're in morph ball form. So what's going to happen here is there's going to be a section where I'm going to be speed boosting. I'm going to try to open a door and then go into morph ball form quickly enough that I don't lose my speed boost and then unmorph as soon as I'm through it so that I can open another door. I will then uh, store a shine spark and immediately do an upwards boost. Uh, we'll see if I actually manage to do any of that. Okay. The other thing is that I'm trying to do like a slight jump there so that I uh, I don't hit that. There we go, like that. So right here. Well, I got the ball, but I missed the missed the door. I'm getting the angle of it wrong. I haven't actually done this in a minute. All right, you can kind of see what I'm trying to get at here, at the very least. I'm trying to go through that door. Um, wow, okay, I'm just sucking at it right now. But the, the idea is to slide off the edge with the, uh, the morph ball form. So you maintain the speed boost. Wow, what the heck? I'm actually not sure what I'm doing wrong at the moment. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. Now, if you don't do any of that, oh, it's good to avoid that missile tank, by the way. It's unnecessary and just waste time. If you don't do any of that, that's totally fine. Um, you can just like come off this ledge, flash shift through here, or actually start your speed boost going through here. And even if you like there, see the door kind of clipped me a little bit, which can happen. There's plenty of space down here to get a speed boost going. You just do like that. And that's it. Um, I did a little hop there to not end up getting slowed down by the floor. I don't know if that actually helps anything or not, but it feels like it does. So as I was as I was falling and in the, the spin mode, you saw me do a little jump into the, the corner um, just to get a little bit of lateral motion so that I didn't hit the floor and get slowed down by the floor. So now we're going to go left and then right and then left again, coming down through here. And we see that guy up over there, which is what reminds me to go this way. Um, and now here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through here, charge a shine spark, flash out, and then try to shift down. I was screwing up my inputs for it, so that was a, that was why that happened. But yeah, um, and now we have a space jump, so it's easy to come up this way. Continue on down here. Um, and we are on our way to get screw attack. We're going to have a brief moment here where we're in the minty fresh zone. And then as I step out here, what I want to do is fire a missile and then start charging a speed boost. So that, that way I'm able to just plow through those things on the floor. It's not like mandatory or necessary and you don't need to save the shine spark either. Um, it just makes getting through that section a little bit cleaner. Otherwise, you're likely to take a whole bunch of damage, which will be a problem as you get to this section. Um, so what's going to happen here, I'll go through this first door, run to the left, I'll have to jump up a bit and then get a grapple beam. But this is all in the minty fresh area, and we don't have gravity suit yet, so it hurts. We just move up through there like so. Here we drop a bomb, come down here. Um, and here we're going to do a couple quick charges to break this block. Um, and now, I will real quick point out, um, this is where at the start of this video, I said there was a new trick that had been discovered recently that like is very, very difficult and changes the run. Um, I have not practiced it yet. Uh, it seems very difficult, but basically what it does is it allows you to use like this little section right here to get a shine spark stored, which normally would not be nearly long enough. You end up like it's called short boost. You end up like doing a slight walk off the ledge in that other room. Uh, 
using flash shift you like walk off the ledge a little bit but the game lets you keep walking and you start a speed boost and you're able to store it so that way you can come down here and get through all of this stuff and do a angled from here angled ball uh shine spark and get up to this section which is where we're headed it's very very difficult there is zero margin for error on it at all um, and if you do that, then it completely changes the entire rest of the route, because if you're able to get screw attack that early, immediately after getting speed boost, uh, there's a lot of different things that you want to do. So that's why I'm not worrying about that for this run. It's very not beginning, not beginner friendly at all. Um, but so you're aware that does exist if you see it in another run somewhere else. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to prime ourselves a water bomb jump, um, which I do there, even though you don't really have to. Um, I don't know why. I just tend to do it there. Um, and then we're going to come up here with that water bomb jump, just like the ones we've done before. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to be space jumping like along this edge, just kind of dipping in and out of the water. Um, and what we, we're aiming for is we want to just slightly rub against that ledge a little bit and then get a jump and go back to the left. And if we do it right, we will slowly gain, uh, we will gain just enough air that eventually we are completely out when we do our next space jump. It'll make more sense as I go through it. So we're just rubbing off the edge a little bit and there we go, we got out. Um, this takes a lot of practice. So this is one that you'll probably want to spend a whole bunch of time on, but it is important for the run. And it's not like mechanically difficult. There's just uh, awkward timings to it. There we are. Um, it's also worth, like, if these guys are coming, you can wait a second and go through. We're going to have to do that trick twice, by the way. Um, because now we're going to come up here and get space jump. Um, we're going to prime another bomb jump as we get out of here. Sorry, not space jump. Screw attack. And now we have screw attack. So I have space, ju space jump and screw attack. The good old Metroid Wombo combo. Um, we're going to come up here. Uh, now, there's a couple ways to deal with this section. One is if you flash shift across there, you will have avoided flipping that switch as of yet. Um, and then you can, uh, if you start running and turn around as you start a speed boost, you can store one as you flip it down. And then as you come up here, use that to get up. Um, that is... If you're able to do it, probably the most reliable method for getting through here, uh, but it's also a bit slower. So I'm going to show you another method for doing it. Um, you can do a regular old water bomb jump here. And then you just have to make sure to unmorph at the right time. And then you can jump off a wall like that. Or this water is actually shallow enough that you don't need to do a proper water bomb jump, but the timing is a little bit different. So you jump, morph and drop it like as you're on the way down. Oops. It's gotta be like on the surface of the water though. And then you can do like that. So basically three ways to get through there. Um, you can pick what the one that fits best for you. I started by doing the, uh, the speed booster one. Uh, the problem with that is if you screw it up and you don't save the speed booster, then you've already flipped the uh, the thing down. And your best bet is either that, at that point, you either have to do the bomb jump method or you uh, load from checkpoint. I've found that method to be the most con uh, consistent for me because it gets you the most height out of the water. Uh, the Where you're not doing a proper water bomb jump, you're just letting the... Basically, what's happening is you're letting the bomb land basically on the surface of the water so that it hits you while you're in the air as a as a morph bomb. As a morph ball, sorry. So that way you get a whole bunch of extra altitude, which gives you a little bit of extra time to unmorph and uh, get your respin and do everything. Um, okay, so here we have to do the this trick again. Um, you can just jump into this uh, corner to start it. Like that. Not my best work, but it's fine. 
Um, now through here, there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, you can come all the way over here and shoot that blob um, and then run back over, which is it, completely fine. Um, or, because you're going to have to come up this way anyway, there's a way to do a pseudo wave on it, which is, uh, there's a couple setups for it that I have not been able to do consistently. So this is the one that I've been doing for now. You get yourself close enough to this ledge without going completely through. Melee to the right, hold L like you were doing for the uh, early space jump. And then just like early space jump, you just kind of aim right at the corner of this and morph. And if you're able to do it consistently, it does save a little bit of time. Of course, now I'm not able to do it. Ugh. There we go. You have to aim slightly above it. I had my aim slightly too low before. But that is a way that you it just saves you running back and forth a little bit in that section. Um, there is a way to do a setup where you walk right up into the thing and turn around and get down. And I, I haven't figured that one out myself. So um, I'll try and find a video that explains it. And I'll link that in the description as well. Uh, so now we need to go up through this whole section. Um, and the way we do that is by space jumping. And this is a bit finicky. Um, also, if you fall down in that water there, that's very bad. So try to avoid doing that. But you're basically just you, you'll figure out a little path for it that you can get through there fairly easily. Um, I've heard a lot of people suggest lining yourself up with these like edges to do your jumps, which does work pretty well. Um, so now we're coming up through here. Uh, we need to get up through this section, so you can just do a couple of quick charges to break that block. And now we're going through the red teleportal for the technically third time, but it's the second time we're going in this direction through it. So if you remember the last time we came through the red teleportal, um, I mentioned the trick that I used to remember which direction I need to go in it, uh, which is now I see that I've already gone that way, so I need to go this way instead. We're going to drop a bomb here and blow this up. Um, and because, ironically, because we didn't do atom skip, hold on, let me get these out of the way. Because we didn't do atom skip, we did come through this section earlier and we're able to open up this path. If you do atom skip, you're going to have to shoot that open as you come through here. So we just use our screw attack and space jump to get up here. Then we are up to the orange teleportal. This is going to take us up to Gavaron. There's a lot of teleporting going on in this little section here. We're going to do a quick charge as we get out of this portal to open this charge door. Slide through here. Uh, we have to take this missile tank. It's in the way. Incidentally, the 0% route takes a completely different uh, section through here uh, because they have to avoid that missile tank. Um, there's a couple of bomb blocks in there. You'll just, as you've done the run a few times, you'll remember which ones they are. Um, and then here we can slide through and do this. Now there's a couple ways to get through this section. Um, you can charge a shine spark uh, and charge it right here and then drop all the way down here and use that shine spark to boost over to the side. Um, or you can just um, I'll wait for those blocks to recharge. Come through here and do like this. There's not really a big speed difference either way. It's just whichever one you're more comfortable with. We come over here and we get on the green teleportal.
If you want to see the Shine Spark method, by the way, that's the one that I used in my previous uh, video. My previous uh, beginner's guide. And if you don't get either of them, again, you've got space jump. You can just hop over. It's fine. But the just going through the wall trick is pretty straightforward. So here we're going to drop some more bombs so we can get through this section. Uh, and we have a fairly complicated shine spark route coming up through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through that door. Uh, I'm going to start charging a shine spark as I go through that door and then try to jump off the wall. You can also, uh, so you can either charge it by jumping off the, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Wow, that's two E parts of shame in this tutorial. Sad times. Uh, you can start charging it from here, and that will happen. Um, or, I'll let that, oh, those don't actually come back. Or you can start charging it as you run to the side. Um, I'm actually going to load from checkpoint real quick because I didn't want those blocks to be broken yet. Ideally, what you do is you store the shine spark right as those blocks are breaking, um, which is a it's a fairly strict timing. It's not the end of the world. It's not super complicated, but what can happen is that you uh, either break the you either break the blocks like you saw um, without storing the shine spark, or you can actually store the shine spark and not break the blocks. So, um, oops. Uh, let me try and show you what happens if you if you mess that up, actually. What? These doors. Okay. So yeah, if you store it without breaking the blocks, you just do that through it, and then you store your Shine Spark again the other way. Uh, but now what I need to do is I need to come down here, slide through this. We're going to shine spark at an angle to the left. Slide under that, short, store it again. Flash shift over here. If you mess that up, you can shine spark into the wall to save it. And then go through here. And then you can grab this missile tank if you really want it. Uh, we now have 72 missiles in this run, which is way more than we probably need. But you can grab it if you want. It's just right there. Um, so to sort of, I'll just show that again because it is a, it is a complicated one. This is an intended uh, shine spark, by the way, like developer intended path that you use normally to just get that missile plus tank. Um, and you can also, like I said, you can start it from there, but the timing is a little bit tighter. It's just annoying with this door because you need to have just open the door as you're going through here. Through here like this. Down left, slide underneath and store immediately. Flash shift across if you can. If not, that's fine. You just do it that way. And right through here. And then we pop these openings. Now, as I come through here, I'm going to unmorph and hold L and aim down so that I break that block fairly quickly. That was a jump out of the edge there, um, which is, it's not too difficult to do. Hold on. Kill those guys real quick because they're in the way. So you just come out of here, jump, and grab that ledge. Come up here. Now these ones you want to jump as a morph ball first, otherwise the animation's a bit slower. And then here we're gonna shoot this and shoot that, and we're gonna do a couple quick charges to get this one. And then we grab that grapple beam and we're on our way down. Um those bugs that I just killed would probably be hanging around here at some point. Um if I hadn't killed them earlier, so. It's usually worth it to kill them, just because otherwise they're kind of in the way. It's also a good way to refill health if you need to. And now we have Gravity Suit. So next, we start a Shine Spark out of here. We charge it, flash forward, and then go up. Um, again, there's another missile tank there if you really want it. Um, I'm not going to grab it because I have so many missiles already, but it's right there if you want it. And we just keep going up. 
into here. Now this here, this fight is probably the most annoying of the double Chozo fights um, because there isn't too much that we can do in this one. Uh, there's a couple of little optimizations you can do. For the most part, uh, if you're just starting out, it's probably best to just, I, I call it Sonic the Hedgehog at them. Like just keep jumping into them with your um, screw attack because it does a lot of damage. But if you can get them both in a line, uh, shooting them with the plasma beam uh, is a way to do a lot of good damage. So like they'll start off up here and you can do like this. And now I'm damaging both of them at the same time. Uh, but now they're split up, so I'm not gonna worry about it anymore. And I'll just finish them off with screw attack. You can also literally just uh, do nothing but screw attack into one of them and bounce around. It's just, you have to be a little bit careful because you see I'm taking damage this whole time. Do a quick charge to get that open. And we go back through the green teleport. So next up is Golzuna. So what I did there, I um, actually morphed, which isn't usually what I do. You jump up through and normally I will uh, just aim because I have to aim anyway to grab this thing. Um, but we're going to do a grab that grapple beam. Oops, hello. Grab the grapple door. And we'll charge a shine spark through here. Come on up. Um, try not to go too far to the left on that because then you end up going way up into a further section up up top kill that guy real quick um okay hold on let me let me explain a little bit what's gonna happen with golzuna so i'm just gonna shoot him at first um i'm then going to try to do a bunch of different shine sparks that can uh make the fight a lot faster uh these shine sparks are very tricky, so if you're just starting off, don't feel like you have to get them all or anything. Um, they're they're pretty tough. Uh, the timing on especially the th the third shine spark is very difficult. Um, so we'll just go ahead and go down here, shoot this guy at first, and I'm gonna wait a second and start this shine spark. Uh, and I screwed that one up, so actually I'm gonna load from checkpoint because I want to be able to do it properly. I waited too long. You can also have a speed boost going as you're going through this tunnel. I'm just not worrying about it right now. Uh, and I have screwed that up entirely. Okay, you saw the first shine spark at the very least. Um, and in fact, ideally, like, I actually find it annoying when I accidentally kill him with the speed boost. Um, I find it easier if I have to shine spark into him but I have screwed this up again oh well I got that one at least so now I'm gonna charge another shine spark uh wow I am doing very poorly on this right now apologies we'll try and get it basically it's a matter of while he's the for the first two at least it's while he's uh, sort of spawning into his next form is when you charge the shine spark. And then you do... Ah, I almost had it there. So if you can get that first shine spark, then it's it's fine. Um, I'm not going to worry about showing the, the, the third one because at this point, like, the timing on it is so ridiculously tricky. You can just go ahead and finish him off with, uh, missiles at this point. But as long as you get 
some of the shine sparks on him, then you're good. And now we charge another one. Do like that. And now we have cross bombs. Uh, Golzuna is a fight that is... Uh, I'm going to try to find a, a video to put link in the description that shows some more about Golzuna as well, because he is... Doing him optimally it requires a lot of very, very specific timings, and there's a couple of different ways to do it, but they're all annoying. Uh, and so we have cross bombs now, which is the worst upgrade in Metroid Dread because they're very inconsistent on if they're actually going to be a cross bomb or not. So we come up through here. But I will regularly end up dropping a regular bomb instead of a cross bomb and not have any idea why that occurred. And now we are on to Hanubia. So the next upgrade we're going to get is Storm Missiles, but it will take us a bit of uh, platforming around to get there and a bit of routing to get there. So here we start a speed boost and I'm shooting because there's doors and as soon as I get through that door I turn into a ball so I can slide right into here. Uh, this guy if you hold up right as you get through there it knocks you straight down which saves you a little bit of time. Uh, do a little jump there, bounce off of that guy and then now we have to do a reverse grapple. Um, and the inputs are basically the same for this as they are for drog skip which we did earlier. You're going to slide into it and turn around and then do a the, the difference is just instead of releasing a charge shot you're doing a grapple beat. so you slide into it turn around and grapple pretty straightforward if you are able to get drug skip but that basically lets us grab a grapple block from the wrong side In that case, it doesn't actually save that much time, uh, like 30 seconds, I think, of moving around to get to that, if I remember correctly. But honestly, I haven't done that grapple block correctly in a long time, so I could be wrong about that. Alright, now we run to the right here and fall down through the block and kill that guy. I like to speed boost through here because it just helps get past all of those things quickly. Um, and then once you get over here, it's more screw attacks to get through the floor. Um, do a little platforming through here. There's a few different ways to route through this room. This is just the one that I remember the easiest. Um, and then we come down through here. Um, and then we come here. Okay, so... This guy out of the way. Excuse me. Thank you. Um, so, we're about to go past Purple Emmy. Um, and there's a way to do a speed boost through here that can be pretty tricky. Um, if you'd rather just flash shift through this, it's honestly fine. Um, but we'll try and do the speed boost. You... Okay, he's not even here. So, sometimes he can be, like, right here. Uh, and if you're doing the speed boost, it can be difficult to stop before you run smack into him. You are underwater, so it's usually fine. Um, but that's also like, as you're as you're just beginning, it might be better just to rely on flash shifts to go through there. Just continue routing along through here. Uh, and the first time we get up to this section, we go right. We are gonna come back through that whole section in a little bit. Continue going right through here. And we're out. Okay. So we're going to screw attack into that guy. And then that is a missile block right there that you can shoot. And we're going to keep heading to the right. You can either screw attack or shoot to get through these floors here. You do have to slide to get through that one. Um, and then we're going to break this thing. And now we're about to fight SQ. 
Um, SQ was a very difficult fight to do casually in this game, uh, but now we have speed boost and screw attack, so it's going to go a little bit differently. We're going to run in here, store a shine spark. Right as he starts to appear, we're going to send it up into him, and then we're going to just bounce off of him a whole bunch. There are optimal ways to do this a lot faster. I'm not going to worry about explaining all that right now. And then we bump into this a few times. It blinks nine times if you can count it before you can hit it again. And now we have Storm Missile. One other thing I'll mention about SQ, um, just because I've seen it trip people up before, that speed boost, the timing on it is slightly tighter than it looks like it is. Um, you need to start it up as he's like sort of appearing and starts to fly in in the back. If you start up the normal slow way, then the timing usually works out just fine. But if you wait slightly too long uh, to the point where he gets his like little zappy energy shield around him, the speed boost doesn't do any damage or the shine spark doesn't do any damage to him if that happens. So then you end up like having to bounce off of him a whole lot more than you might expect in uh, uh, screw attack form. So if that happens to you, that's what it was. And we continue up through here. Oops. And now in here, I'm I'm ho already holding down R to start up my uh, storm missile, so that when I get out there, I'm waiting less time. Come back through here again. Same thing here. Already holding R. Uh, for this one, I like to aim at this angle, so that way it doesn't clip on anything weird. It'll hit all of them that way. Uh, and now we have another of the... Uh, hold on, let me just clear these guys out real quick so I can explain this. We have another um, double Chozo bot fight. And what we're aiming for on this one, I'm going to charge through here. I'm going to go underneath them. And I'm going to store a shine spark on the other side by jumping a whole bunch. And then I'm going to launch that shine spark into the gold one who will be on the left side because there's a gold one and a gray one. I'm going to launch the shine spark into the gold one on the left side. And then I'm going to try to, as much as possible, keep them both lined up so that I can just hit them with hit them both at the same time with the plasma beams. Um, again, that's just optimizing. If you get into this and you mess any of it up or whatever, uh, that's totally fine. Don't worry about it. You can just uh, screw attack into them. Uh, and in fact, you can also use storm missiles on them now that you have storm missiles. Um, you have only have a limited amount of missiles, so you can't kill them with storm missiles, but uh, you can use the storm missiles on them to, to do some damage. But what I'm going to try to do is come up through here with my speed boost, do some jumping, land that, go right in him. Oh, he got knocked the wrong direction. That is very weird. Um, but it's fine because that guy was kind enough to go that way. But now they're both underneath. I'm going to try to get them back up again. Because I need to get them both on one side of me. There we go. Yeah, they're not cooperating right now. These guys are a pain like that. So I'm just going to finish them off with screw attack. Or possibly die. Okay, he's dead. So I'm going to get that health from that. This went very poorly. But you can at least from that kind of see the angle of um, what I was trying to do there. For the sake of time, because this video is already very long, I'm not going to mess around with that too much. Um, that's that's just a difficult fight and will continue to be difficult for a while until you get very accustomed with it. Continue coming around through here. Oops. Drop a cross bomb there. Another one here. Uh, ideally, you want to get up on this platform before you actually start charging your thing there. I just missed that jump slightly. Now we continue to maneuver along through here. Um, through this section, you want to charge because it makes killing these much faster. Because the diffusion beam will actually hit it multiple times. And then now we have the easiest nephew brain fight in the game. We're going to charge a shine spark as we come through here. We're going to launch it into him. And then as soon as he's vulnerable, we hit him with a single screw attack and he's dead. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but that, of course, is followed up by the most complicated Emmy fight in the game. Um, so there's a couple different ways to do this. I'll show you the one that I find the most consistent, and then I'll just explain the other one afterwards, because otherwise we'll be here all night. So we hit that. Start coming down here. I'm going to need to clear some uh, blocks pretty quickly. I'm going to run to the left, move another block, and then come back around. So I clear these bomb blocks. Do that. If you can, throw one of those up over there. I'm going to drop a cross bomb there and start shooting him as he comes through here. This is a lot of very, very tight movement that takes a lot of practice. Um, this is easily the hardest of the Emmy fights, um, at least if you do it this way. Because then you also have to like flash back over here. That's why we knocked this thing over before was to give that extra space for me to get him hit a whole bunch. And then as he got close to me, drop down, flash shift over to the left, uh, turn around and then shoot him. Um, there's a couple other ways you can kill him, uh, which I'll just explain. I'm, I'm not going to worry about showing them, uh, but there's a couple other ways you can you can kill him, which I'll explain here in a second. So, um, just to mention it real quick, there is a way that you can drop through from up there, sit right here, and kill him just as he's, like, walking along over here trying to get you. Uh, it's extremely tight timing and very, very difficult to do prep. Like, you have to have perfect aim, basically, the entire time. Uh, and doesn't save as much time as you would think, because having done that, you then have to climb through all of this, like, other stuff because you haven't done any of the motion that you did before. Um, the other place that you can kill him is if you come up here, uh, you can come up through here, bust this out, uh, knock this back. So you don't wanna, you don't wanna step on those obviously, but if you knock that back, you get a little bit more space and that gives you a big, nice flat area to kill him in. So you'd be like here and you're shooting back this way. Um, but that said, um, I've always done him the way that I just did him. Even when I was first starting, it seems a lot scarier than it actually is. It just takes a little bit of practice and you'll get it down before too long. Uh, okay. So having killed him, we come up here, we break the, the block that was there the rest of the way. Uh, and we flash shift across these and we're heading back to the left. Uh, this here, you want to be able to break that pretty quickly so that you can avoid getting hit by that guy. It just slows you down slightly. And then we are heading back up to Hanubia. We are nearing the end of the route. As far as upgrades go, we just have power bombs left to get. Um, and as far as boss fights go, there are two Chozo X and then Ravenbeak. So I tend to do a, a speed boost to the left here. You can charge a shine spark there and use it to get past this guy. Uh, but if you do the platforming right, it's actually a little bit slower. I didn't do the platforming right there, but. So we're coming up through here. We're gonna skip this cutscene. That's one that you have to let start playing first. Um, and then what's gonna happen on this guy in here, I'm gonna hold R to start charging a storm missile before he even uh, is active. And that'll give me a slightly faster charge on the storm missile as I get through it. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to... So he'll be holding up a shield. I will charge storm missile while he has the shield up. And while he has the shield down, I will shoot him with an extra missile. It'll it'll make a little bit more sense as I, as I go through it. So we run all the way over here to the right. I'm holding R. This comes out. We skip the cutscene. And I, you see, I sneak in an extra missile there. If you do it right, then it takes three rounds and you're done. You can also charge another storm missile on in there at the end. In fact, you could still be using storm missiles here if you wanted. 
It's slightly slower than button mashing. Uh, but it is possible to do that entire fight with just storm missiles. Um, the reason that I don't match for the first part is because the shield blocks it, by the way. Once you're, uh, once you've broken his shield, which you can also like just rip his shield off. There's like a whole, um, mechanic that you can go through to do that. But once his shield is gone, uh, shooting him with, uh, beam shots, as long as you can do it quickly is faster. Um, but before then it's faster to use storm missiles on him. because the amount of time it takes to power them up is offset by the fact that you can't hit them otherwise. Okay, so we now have power bombs. Um, this is a section where weirdly we don't want to go fast because we want to wait for that power bomb to charge to set it off before we go through. And the reason for that is, um, as you can kind of see here, power bomb charges do not last through doorways for some reason. Um, so here we're going to drop this power bomb and then we're going to immediately start shooting these things that are here because we want more power bombs. Um, and these have a pretty high rate of dropping them. There they are. Those have a pretty high rate of dropping power bombs. Uh, the, the issue is just that power bomb kills don't drop power bombs, um, is my understanding at least. So, uh, you'll want to keep an eye on your power bomb meter as you're like running back and forth there getting these power bombs. Um, there is also another way to get them that I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Um, but we do want them to get through here because it makes these next couple sections a little bit faster. So here again, we're going to charge it and drop it right as we start to go through that so that we can clear all that very quickly. Um, and then we could be doing a shine spark or a, a speed boost through this whole section. But basically now we want to come through here, charge a shine spark, go into ball form, charge a bomb and go up. Um, I'm going to show you actually because I said I was going to and I forgot. Um, if you get here and you don't have any power bombs, there's uh, there's this guy. But that is, it tends to be a bit slower than just running back and forth in that room, shooting the things through the floors. But yeah, it's charge, go into ball form, charge the, uh, the power bomb, and then shoot up. And we come to the right here. This guy is not a problem we just grab that and go through and now we have gold chozo who we fight basically the same way the difference is we're going to start with a single shot on him there we are i don't know the that bomb there was just me hitting the wrong button <laughs> You can also, uh, while he's doing his little transform phase, uh, you can also use that as a time to charge up another storm missile. He actually doesn't take damage while he's transforming. Uh, so it's totally fine to charge up a, a storm missile there. In fact, I would say it's, that's better. I just forgot to do it. All right. And now we are on our way to Ravenbeak at the end of the run. There's a, there's a little trick you can do here where if you run to the right a little bit, you can start charging a speed boost and carry it along over here just to save a little bit of time. Um, and then we're going to charge a power bomb here and then go through the door. Um, just for a very slight time optimization. Um, and then a couple things I want to note uh, as we get to the Ravenbeak fight. Um, so in the first phase, there's a few ways to deal with the first phase. In fact, actually, let's just let's just show a few ways to deal with the first phase. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, what is probably the most beginner friendly method of dealing with it, 
Um, our goal is to deal enough damage to him uh, inside one uh, parry phase or one little cutscene that we completely skip him turning gold, uh, which when he's when he's gold, he just doesn't take damage. Uh, and you have to wait to parry him again and then only do damage to him during a parry uh, cinematic. Um, we want to completely skip that part of the fight uh, because it's very slow. So the most beginner friendly way to do that is uh, by charging up some storm missiles on him and then doing a parry. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up, we're going to hit him with nine missiles and then we're going to uh, just start charging storm missiles on him. We will hold down R even as we parry him. Um, and then we will be able to fire off those storm missiles and then do a, a bit of light button mashing um, to be able to, to finish him off in that cutscene. It's the lowest uh, APM requirement or button presses requirement to be able to do it that way, but it is a little bit slower because we're going to have to actually be waiting for a minute for him to do his parryable move. So we come up in here. One, two, come on. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and now we wait. We just jump into that to break it. We parry that, we fire off the missiles, and then we button match. And that's the, the most consistent way to get that done. Or probably the, that's the easiest but slowest way, I guess is the better way to put it. Um, the other way you can do it, um, I will note if you have a, a turbo controller that can do 15 hertz, um, which is just very, very fast shots, um, you, you don't need to worry about storm missiles at all. You can just use that turbo to do it that fast. Or if you're that confident in your button mashing that you can do it that fast. Um, the other thing that we can do is um, we can again use storm missiles what we're going to do is just dump damage into him as fast as we possibly can by shooting missiles at him and dropping cross bombs at his feet um, to force him into his big red wave move, which is a guaranteed cinematic after a parry. The problem is when he does that, because it starts the cinematic, we can't pre-charge the storm missile. So instead we'll have to really quickly charge a storm missile and by, by holding R the entire time we're doing anything, We'll real quick charge a storm missile, fire off one of them, and then do button mashing after that. And that usually works as well. It has a little bit higher button mashing requirement, but it still is usually enough to get the job done. Now we duck down, I'm holding R, parry, get the one lock on, and then I'm mashing, and we got it. So you can see that's a lot faster. Okay, in this phase, um, there's a couple important things to note about this phase. Uh, for one, and he does that, I want to do the dash and melee move. Or, uh, uh, melee, and, sorry, melee and aim move, so that I can just sit underneath it. When he does that move, you just go underneath him. When he stomps down on the ground, um, he does that. And you can also do this charge, which if you do that right, you can then slide underneath him and do like this. So we'll just start fighting him. And we're gonna shoot mostly missiles in this phase. It's always important that you do that melee into aim move away from him. Uh, so that, that way the shots end up over top of you. Um, and as you get more confident in this, you can start doing things like weaving in cross bombs and there's other various moves you can do here. But for the most part, we're just pumping damage into him. Oops. And so we get to this. And now at this point, we are once again... Oh, I should have parried that, actually. We are once again just pumping damage into him. Uh, the difference is he has a few different moves and now it's easier to drop cross bombs on him. Uh, when he does that move, just drop a power bomb. Just be careful if you're dropping cross bombs that you're not uh, uh, getting knocked into the air. 
if he does this move, you can actually like bump into him right as he's about to shoot by watching for when his like cannon starts to pulse. Uh, and it's fine to do that parry move as well. Um, you can just jump afterwards if you don't want to do the, the whole cinematic. So that's pretty much all the moves he has here. So we'll go ahead and finish him up. Like I say, the easiest way to get through this is just get close to him and pump damage. And uh, the way that I'm doing the cross bombs is just like uh, essentially just tapping ZL a couple times every so often as I'm mashing, uh, mashing missiles. All right. So we have defeated Ravenbeak. He is a, he is a tough fight. Um, and he's one that you can always save time on, uh, just by doing him slightly better every time. So now we have, uh, the weird big Kraid Ravenbeak hybrid thing. And there's an important thing I'm going to point out about him, which is why I'm not skipping the cinematic yet. Um, there's a timing. So essentially the way he works is he needs to get to a certain point next to you. Okay. Hold on. Actually, this is, can I pause in this <laughs> listening to him making the noise as well? I'm trying to explain that is not working. Can I pause here? I cannot. Okay. So I'm going to let him eat me so that I can sit on the respawn screen before I uh, explain all this. Oh no, game over. Okay. So you saw how he was sort of crawling towards you. He needs to get to Samus before that scene will end. Like he has to get all the way across. There's no like killing him early. He has to get all the way across to you. However, um, if you haven't dealt a certain amount of damage to him by the time he gets to you, then he eats you. But if you have done that minimum amount of damage, then you are able to, to kill him and, uh, and move on. Um, so the, the other side of it is he goes slower as he's taking damage. So what all that means is that in order to get through this particular part of the game, the fastest, uh, you wait for a certain point to start shooting so that he can have been moving faster up until that point. And there's a really obvious cue for it. That's very easy. Um, he will be walking towards you. He will take a big sort of step forward with his, it's his uh, left arm. It's on the right side of the screen. Uh, and then he will do like a little stumble with it. And when he does that little stumble, that's when you start shooting. So I will show you what that looks like. So we skip that. Here's his weird face opening and he's moving, he's moving. I'm watching the arm on the far right side of the screen and there's that little stumble right before he drags himself forward. And as long as you start shooting right when he does that little stumble, then uh, he will die by the time he gets to this point and he will have saved, uh, you will have saved a little bit of time as well. All right, this escape section. Um, there's been some debate on whether or not it's faster to do a shine spark up here or if it's faster to just do what I just did. Um, so I just do what I just did. If it is faster to shine spark, it's not by much. There's lots of little optimizations you can make through this section, but honestly, as a beginner, I would mostly just worry about getting through here. Um, you can, for example, you can start a shine spark here or start a speed boost here and like go into that opening, but uh, it's not really necessary. I will say uh, here, you want to drop a power bomb. And as long as you are doing what I said earlier about always restarting the game after you get to Elon, you will not crash there. Uh, but I have crashed there a few times before I started doing that. Or honestly, even if the game has been running for a while, it's just best to restart it before doing a new run. Now we just continue through here. And now from here, we're going to start, we're going to charge a shine spark, but we're going to do a couple little side jumps before we do it. You can also go into more fall form. And again, that's to save a cutscene from happening. And then here, uh, we're going to try and do a shine spark. Uh, oops, I screwed it up. Um, let me see. I've got time. Let me see if I can show it to you. We're going to charge a shine spark through here. 
Jump off of this wall. Save it here. Come up through here and then hit the top of this and then shine spark to the left. If you don't get that, then that's fine. By the way, that's time. As soon as this cutscene starts playing is when time starts uh, or time ends. Um, if you don't get that little speed boost and shine spark through that last end little bit there, again, that's totally fine. Um, I think in my PB I screwed it up, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, but it is a nice little extra last minute um, optimization you can make to save yourself. Like, I think if you do it properly, it saves you like five seconds or something. Uh, but that's it. That's the Metroid Dread No Major Glitches speed route. Um, I hope you guys... Uh, I hope you guys find this helpful. If you have any questions, please do ask them in the comments. I try to keep up with those those questions and answer them as best as I can. Um, and I will have those links to some videos by several other very, very uh, talented YouTubers who have been and talented speedrunners who have been uh, showing some very, very good uh, setups and other methods for doing things. Um, but yeah, that is the end of the speed route. Uh, be sure to check the description for those links to other videos, like I said. Um, if you liked the video, maybe give me a follow if you like. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.